hello guys finally i'm back with another project and today i bring you a full crowd blog application using html css and javascript for the front end php for the back end and mysql for managing our database now there is going to be two parts to the project this is going to be the front end where we are going to build all the pages that we are going to need or we are going to design all the pages that we are going to need for the whole project and then in the next video which is going to be the back end we are going to have the logic for everything that we need for this to be a fully functioning um block or a fully functioning application all right so i'm going to go ahead and then show you all the pages that we are going to create in this complete project okay so this is the actual completed project use um with all the back end and everything right so right here this is going to be the main page or the home page so users can come here and they do not need to log in before they access this page okay we are going to have the blog page as well and other pages okay and we are going to explore all those pages all right so in this home page we have a featured post as you can see here we have a featured post you can click to read more about that particular post and we can even click the category and then see more posts that belong to that particular category all right we have more posts here okay on how you see we have this cool effect you can click to see more posts that belong to the particular category and here too we can click to read more about a particular post and notice we have the authors for each post okay and for you to be able to post anything on this blog website you have to log in okay you have to sign up and then log in before you can actually post anything all right so that is about that and down here notice we have all the categories for all on this blog so we have the music and we have only one post for music as you can see um, there's the only post for music we have food and we have two posts for that okay so we have this and then we have that okay the featured post this featured post is just a duplicate of this okay so this is the post that we are fetching for the feature we have science and technology which we have three posts okay so we have uh, one by daniel vino we have one by diana I, and then we have another by daniel vino so he has two posts um, for science and technology all right and for travel we, we don't have no we don't have any posts okay so that's why we get this prompt or that message and i think for art too we don't have any posts like that okay we have one for wildlife which is this so we can click and then read more about that post and notice we have the time okay for each post all right so let's go back to home and then we have our blog page okay it's going to be another page that we are going to build so we have our footer here okay um, as well it's going to be on all pages and we have our socials all right okay so on this blog post we are just going to have all the posts that we have in our database and here we can actually search by the post title okay so uh, let me search lorem and we can see all these posts have lorem in them okay so we have this with lorem um yeah we have this this and this as well okay so we have all these posts with lorem and once again we can click to go to the particular ca um, category that belongs to these posts we can even read more on that particular post and all that okay let's go back and i'm going to say something that doesn't exist and you can see no post found for this search all right um what else now these three pages are not going to, i'm not going to really work on them okay so we are just going to have this h2 i don't know if it's h1 we're just going to have this title here for the different these three different pages okay i just want to keep this um just for i just want to work on the actual blog pages the actual application pages i think by the end of this video you can actually 
create um, these three pages yourself okay so now let's proceed and we are going to sign up we are going to um, sign up as an author by default when you sign up here you are going to be an author okay so um, right now I have so these are the tables that we are going to create for the application I don't want to go into the details um, for the back end because this is not the back end video we are actually going to do the back end in the next video this is only going to be um, for designing all the pages that we are going to need right so here we have the users table and we can see we have three users okay and don't mind the ids this is just due to um a lot of testing that's why i have these um, unusual ids here right so we have three users we have an achiever we have diana we have um and that we have daniel um, vino too so this is admin is going to determine who is the administrator or who are the administrators for the blog website right so we have ns achiever as an administrator with day one and then then i is not an administrator so if your is admin is zero then that means you are not an administrator and with that by default you are going to be an author okay so if you sign up here um let's sign up a user i'm going to sign up a dem quest and notice we have some checks okay so we can't enter invalid um, details right so the username is going to be adam email adam at quest.com um password i'm going to do adam quest one two three that's the password and then quest one two three and if i okay let me and let me get an avatar for this person let me just use this let me just mismatch this okay so this password here doesn't match this and try to sign up and passwords do not match okay so we are checking the passwords as well let me actually pull this up so that you see something that will happen here to um here to all right so let me actually make this password match so i'm going to enter them quest one two three again and i'm going to select the avatar again because this page refreshed okay so this avatar is no more so i'm going to select that again and i'm going to sign this person up as an author okay so when i sign up focus on this part okay this images folder that we have here and the image that we selected here is going to be uploaded into this folder okay so in this folder we are going to have all the images that are going to be uploaded in the um application right the thumbnails and then the avatars for our users so i'm going to sign up and notice we have the person okay the image that we selected right and these are some of the thumbnails and this is a user oh sorry there's daniel there's a thumbnail so basically we have everything here okay everything is working perfectly um right so once you sign up we get redirected to this page which is the sign in page and i'm going to go ahead and then sign in okay so to sign in we need the username or the email okay so we can sign in using the username and then the email um which are going to be unique okay we are going to make sure they there are no duplicates for the username and then the um emails for every sign up okay so i'm going to enter and then let me just enter a wrong username here and the password and then quest one two three to, and try to sign in user now found okay this user it's not found all right so now let me enter a real username the actual username and we are signed in and for an author we are going to have the ability to only post and then manage our posts okay we are going to be able to post an article or a blog and manage our own articles or blogs if i show sign in all right let me show you something real quick so i'm going to refresh this user's table and notice we have the adam quest record here okay a new user has been added and the is admin is zero okay if i should log in as vino or achiever so let me log out here 
and notice when i log out i cannot go back okay if i go back to um let's say uh i don't know is it dashboard oh you let me just log in again and then try to go back to the page that we are from at, at, at them quest one two three okay so this is the page that we are on right now which is we shouldn't be accessible by just anyone okay you have to be logged in to access this page and i'm going to log out and try to access that page again this should bounce me back to the sign in page okay and that's what happens right here okay all right so i'm going to log in as an admin so either daniel vino or achiever okay so i can log in using the email or the username and i'm going to go ahead achiever that's the username and then the password is achiever one two three okay and notice how all the passwords are hashed okay yeah so we are not going to store any password and notice the difference okay on the regular other page or the dashboard for the others we have only add post and then manage post but for an admin we have add user manage users add cat category and then manage categories as well okay so if you are not um, an admin you cannot access these other functionalities or these other um pages all right yeah so let me actually let me open this um, on a new page here and i'm going to add a new post okay so uh, let me go to lipsum and i'm going to grab some dummy posts dummy text for a post okay so um, i don't know let me just grab this yeah this should be good for a title and this should be related to i don't know art now let me change it wall life should be good and i'm okay one thing too if you are an admin that is when you are going to see this okay this should be featured we are going to correct that when we are uh, actually coding it okay so that is when we are going to see this check box to to make this featured or not featured okay that is when you are going to have this if you are an admin then you are going to have this if not then you are go not going to have this uh, so only an admin can make let me actually correct this right now so like, i'm going to go to my um add posts page do, do, do. okay this should be featured i'm going to save that and refresh the page okay all right so i'm going to paste the title again this is going to be a wildlife um for the body let me just grab this come back here and then paste it okay and if i don't set this to featured notice what happens i'm going to select a thumbnail for wildlife uh something related to wildlife this should be good all right so we have everything okay so let me try and there's an empty uh text area right if i try to add the post nothing happens okay notice the image is not uploaded as well okay so we are checking everything for correct inputs before we go ahead and then enter or insert a record in our database okay so i'm going to go back and um, select the image again the page refreshed right so we have to select the image again this one i selected so i'm going to uncheck the featured and i'm going to go ahead and then post it and new post added successfully let's go back to the home page refresh and we have a new okay the page refreshed okay that is why the cat that is why the category is full so i'm going to go back and what was it what was the title uh, okay so there's it so i'm going to edit this okay we have the same mistake on the edit page as well i'm going to go back and de debug this real quick so this should be featured right sorry for that but we are going to go ahead and then set this to wildlife okay that's the category 
they should belong to and if i don't choose a new thumbnail then the old thumbnail already in the record or already in the database okay which is this okay this here okay then that is going to remain the same okay so let's go ahead and then edit this or update that i'm going to refresh and now this belongs to the world life um, category and for the dashboard we have six main pages that we are going to create okay actually we have more than that okay we are going to create a lot of pages we are going to have edits uh, or update pages for all these okay so when we want to update this particular um which is this let's let's make sure i'm going to okay so this is what i'm i'm going to update okay so i'm going to change the title to um just something random and i can change the category here to be an ad i can set it to featured so in this case it should be the first image that we have here in the home okay and i can even change the thumbnail so i can um, this is an ad okay so it belongs to the ad category so i'm going to go ahead and uh, let me use this and then update the post let's come here refresh and we have that as the featured post okay so we can do there's a lot of features that i'm not even remembering to mention because this um focusing we are going to focus on the front end for this video right but in the next video which is going to be the back end i'm, I'm going to make sure i go into details um all the features that we are going to have in this uh, application all right and for responsiveness this is going to be actually responsive so as you can see here um let's go to the blog page okay you can click to read about particular posts i'm going to go back you can click to read or to see more post that belong to a particular category let's go to ads travel there is no um, post for travel okay i'm going to go back to home and for the empty pages about services and then um, contact this is how they are going to look okay they are also responsive let's go to the dashboard okay so this is how they are going to look on so this is the manage post um, page we can go to the add post page and you can see it is also um, responsive let's go back we have add user page which is also responsive we have um, manage users okay so these are this is how the tables um, the table is going to be aligned okay okay so the rows in the table are going to be aligned perfectly like this we have add category let's go back and then we have manage categories okay so these are the pages that we are going to um, create and now let's see how it is going to look on mobile phones all right so this is how it's going to look on mobile phones okay let's go home all right so we have our posts okay single post page we have our categories page okay we have only one for music and for food we have two and for travel we don't have any okay let's go to our blog and this is how the blog page is going to look we can actually search Let's search something. Okay, so these are the posts with that search. Let's go to the dashboard. All right. So we have the sidebar here. Okay. So this is going to pull up all the um, pages that we have for the dashboard. All right let's actually check all the pages okay so we have the add post page 
um, we have the manage posts which we are already on we are we have add user okay let's go back what else we have manage users okay we have add category and then we have manage category okay so this is how um, our stuff is going to be aligned on mobile all right so that's enough for now let's proceed and then start creating all the pages and guys i don't know if i mentioned this but if i sound weird that's because i'm not feeling very well okay that's why all right so now let's create a folder okay so you can go on your desktop and then create a folder you can you can go anywhere and then create um, a folder and i have mine here so in here in my main folder that is the block folder i have uh, images folder okay and that is going to have all the images that we are going to use um, for the project these two images are going to be used to test um, during the back end okay so we're actually not going to need them um, in the front end okay and these are just a lot of images that i grabbed from pixels okay i downloaded from pixels.com so if you want you can get them from there but I'm, I'm sure i'm going to leave a link in the description for the images as well all right so let's go ahead and then create um, all the pages that we are going to need and the first one i don't know this in no particular order okay so we are going to have the about.html which is going to be an empty page uh let me come on yep let's go ahead and then create another one let me just use this we are going to have add category dot html we are going to have um, add post dot html okay in the back end we are going to change all these extensions okay the extensions that we have the html we are going to change them to php but as i said this video is uh, for the design or the front end okay so we are going to have add user dot html as well we are going to have blog okay dot html what else do we need we are going to have um, category posts okay dot html that is going to have um that is going to show us um, the post that belong to a particular design, um, a particular category right we're going to have a contact page which is going to be empty just like the about page we are going to have a dashboard not html which i'm going to rename to index okay so we are going to in the back end we are going to create a folder called admin okay and this is going to be the index of that folder okay yeah so that is going to be the manage posts page basically so from there we are going to have edit category dot html as well to edit our categories we are going to have edit post html so that we can edit our posts there's a full code application that we are going to create in the php in the next video so from edit post we have edit user we are going to be able to edit some user details from there we are going to have index which is going to be the home page manage categories no pm html and what else manage users dot html and uh, post single post okay so post dot html okay so that is going to show a particular post or a single post we have services which is also going to be an empty page 
and i think the last okay the last two ones are the sign in and then the sign up so sign in dot html and then sign up dot html all right we also need a css file so style.css we could actually create a folder and then put it inside okay but we only need this uh, file we are only going to have one css file so there's no problem keeping it here i think we are going to restructure this whole thing um in the back end okay so don't worry about that now we are going to have a javascript file as well it's going to be only one file all right so in all we have 21 um files okay all right so i'm going to right click and then open with vs code okay that's going to be my text editor you can use anything you want all right and for extensions okay let me show you real quick i'm using preview on web server okay preview on web server where is it let me just read this i think i have it here preview on web server okay and this is the same thing as live server okay but i prefer this because it only um, updates the new changes okay unlike um, live server that refreshes the page every time all right and i'm using bracket pair colorizer as well what else do you need um i think that's all okay i'm also using emit but emit actually comes pre-installed in vs code so so if you're not using vs code then you can search emit and then install it all right now let me increase this so that you can actually see everything that goes on and we are going to start in our home page okay that is the index html all right so i'm just going to do exclamation tab to get this boilerplate and i'm going to say responsive multi page blog website yeah that should be good that is our title and i'm going to link to our css okay so css style of css yep let me leave a comment here i don't know if you need that but yeah okay so we are going to start with our now let's actually preview this um using the preview on web server okay so i'm going to right click and then preview server or launch on browser and it is going to open this project in my um, default browser okay all right and i'm using chrome for this so that's what we have nothing on the page but we are going to start from scratch so all right okay so let's start with our nav okay our navigation now i'm going to put that inside a nav tag which is an atm of five semantic tag and inside this i'm going to have a div to wrap around um the elements inside okay so i'm going to have a div with a class of container and another class of nav underscore underscore container okay and this container class is going to be on basically every main section of the page okay so we are going to style this so that we put it on every section every main section that we have on the different pages okay and it is going to center you are going to understand this when we get to the css okay but this is particular to this now okay so inside this container class we are going to have the logo which is going to be a link and it should come to this page that's the current page that we are on let me actually give this a class nav underscore underscore logo and it's just going to say get okay all right and below that we are going to have uh, an added list let me give this a class as well class of nav underscore underscore items and i'm going to have my li's okay and each li is going to have an anchor tag okay so this first one is going to go to the blog not html I'm going to duplicate this uh, i think five times yep 
we are going to have about we are going to have services contact sign in okay so this should take us to the sign in.html page okay so this is going to and it's going to say about services contact sign in and lastly this is going to show let me actually open the completed project um, so that we make reference to some of the things that we're going to do so i'm going to localhost block completed okay so if we are not signed in okay we want to show the sign in um, link okay but if we are signed in for instance if i um, log in here achiever uh, one two three then the sign in um, should be replaced by this okay our avatar and then this this and that we have here okay so that's what we are going to do um we are going to have the logic in the php but for now let's have that so this will go to let me actually remove the anchor tag here and for this li i'm going to give this a class of nav underscore underscore profile okay it is going to have the nav profile so inside it i'm going to have a div with a class of avatar that is going to have our avatar or our user image and then we are going to have an unadded list which is going to have this dashboard link this link and then this logout link as well okay so inside the ul we are going to have an li we are going to have an anchor tag that is going to take us to our dashboard dot html so this is just going to say dashboard okay and below that we are going to have our logout which we don't have yet logout come on <laughs> oh okay so logout.html all right now for the avatar it's going to have an image okay so let's go into our images folder and then avatar one let's just grab that i don't need an alt for this okay all right and i think that is all for actually you know what we are going to need two buttons on small screens okay so let me show you real quick so we are going to need this which is this three or the hamburger icon and then we are going to have we are going to need times or this uh, x icon as well or this close icon whatever it's called all right so those are going to show only on actually you know what let me put that below the ul okay so those are going to show only on small screens and that is on tablets and then um uh, mobile phones okay so i'm going to put that inside a button tag and then give this let me the first one is going to be the hamburger icon and it's going to have an id of open and that's called that's called nav btn and then we are going to have one for close okay close now btn okay so actually let's go to we're going to use icon scouts for this okay so let's grab let me actually grab the cdn from here and i have the fastest internet in the world okay so that's why this is taking a century to load all right so i'm going to grab the icon scout cdn paste it in my head leave a comment here icon scout cdn all right let's go to the icon scout page come on let's go ahead and then grab those two icons I need a free one okay all right so i'm going to search uh, menu and i have this so i just copy it come back to my code and paste it in my button okay 
and i'm going to do the same for the close icon uh, which one should i use let me use this copy and then paste it in okay so that's all for now let me actually leave a comment um here okay yeah okay so that's all for now let's proceed to the css and have some styles for this all right now we are going to use css variables okay so that we don't repeat ourselves um, in certain cases all right so for instance our colors we are just going to have css variables so whenever we need them we just um, use that variable instead of writing the color code and all that okay so yeah, I'm going to have some root variables, okay, and that is going to be accessible anywhere in the project. All right, so I'm going to call this first color color primary. That is going to be my primary color, and that is going to have a hex code of six f six a um, f a. Okay, so that is my primary color, and I'm going to have pri um, color primary. Come on light okay so that's going to be a light version of the primary color and that is going to be an hsl okay hue saturation um, lightness and the hue is going to be 242 the light um, saturation is going to be 91 percent and then the lightness is going to be 69 okay i'm actually going to give this an alpha of 18 percent okay so we have some transparency and that is what's going to give it that light effect all right so let me show you real quick we can just uh, we could just let me duplicate this remove this and now i could change this to the hsl okay notice it's the same values that we have here and i could just add the alpha it's going to give me the same thing right all right and for the other colors i'm just going to paste them in okay we have a lot of variables here so i'm just going to grab them and paste them in okay all right so these are the colors color primary primary lights primary um, primary variants and then we have red and all that okay so these are all the colors that we're going to need for this project and we have a transition okay um i want to have a constant transition for some of the elements that we have that is why i have a transition variable here and we have a container width for the different screen sizes that we are going to have so on big screens we are going to have 74 percent for the container let me actually show you that okay so notice our elements are centered okay so we have this margin here and then this margin there as well okay that is because of the container and we are going to talk more about that once we um as we go on we have this width for medium and then small devices and then this is going to be for our forms and all that okay we have border radius different types of or different sizes of border radius as well all right so that's for the variables now let's proceed and then have some general classes okay so let me leave a comment here I want to have this well commented, okay? Um, yeah. All right, so let's proceed and I'm going to give every element a margin of zero, okay? I'm going to move. Let me actually show you. So let's see what we got from the html okay so this is what we got from the html so we have our logo we have our blog or um, about services contacts so these are the nav links then we have the dashboard this should be logout i made a mistake there come on logout logout so that should take us to the logout page which we don't have yet but that's no problem and we have those two um the two buttons that we grabbed from icon scout okay so this is what we got from the html just have to show you that before we proceed 
let me put this side by side so that we see what's going on i think the css should be able to fit all right let me reduce this as well okay so every element on the web page should have a margin of zero okay so we are going to reduce the margin to zero let me actually comment this out for now a pattern of zero as well i'm going to comment that out as well but then i'm going to set the outline to be zero as well border is going to be zero some items have borders for instance some inputs um, have borders so we are going to set those um, to be zero as well appearance zero list style is going to be none and list style is the bullets that we have okay let me comment that out and then show you so list style is the bullets that we had for our unadded list okay now let's remove the um, underlines for our links or our anchor tags okay so the text decoration is going to be done for any element as well we could target for instance our uh, ul and then set the list style for that to be none and target our anchor tag as well and then set the text decoration to none as well but decoration okay to be none i think that that would just be an extra line of code and i don't want that so yeah so that's what we have now let's proceed and then target our body okay and here i want to actually change the fonts that we have okay so so i can now uncomment this so as you can see we don't have that pattern that we had before and i'm going to uncomment this margin as well and as you can see we don't have the margin as well okay now as i said we are going to change our fonts it doesn't it doesn't look that good so i'm going to go to google fonts and we are going to use mont serif okay so let's go ahead and then grab that so let's search mont serif mont serif yep and i'm going to use from the light okay so from the 300 font weight let me grab that the regular 400 we have the medium which is 500 we have semi bold we have bold um we have extra bold maybe i don't need the extra bold but let's just copy that as well okay and we can import it in our css or we can um have it in our html so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to go back to my html and paste it in the head okay now let me comment that as well uh, google font monster it yeah let's go back and the font family is going to be the uh monserrat fonts that we just copied okay so font family for the body is going to be monserrat and now our font is changed which is nice now let's proceed and i'm going to set the line height to be 1.6 color the text color is going to be um color gray 900 which is this color code that we have okay which is this dark blue and then we are going to have overflow x so overflow on the x axis is going to be hidden and then let me give that a background of um, color bg okay which is um, another color that we have here okay All right so this is how we use css variables all right now let's proceed and i'm going to set the font size to be 0 0.9 rem all right so that's it and we have our changes here reflecting perfect so let's move on and let me target the container okay so i said i'm going to have a general container class as 
ha i have here i'm going to have that in most sections of the page okay so let me start with that i'm going to give that a width of the container width lg okay so that is going to be the width on um, large devices and then the maximum width okay i'm going to say some screens are very large or very wide so we are going to set the maximum width of this container to be a thousand eight hundred pixels okay eighteen hundred pixels and then the margin in line margin in line of auto all right so we have that or you can just do margin zero auto is basically the same thing all right nice now every section okay so let me show you from the finished project this is going to be the section so this is going to be a featured section okay and this whole post is going to be inside another section okay if we go to the let's say um i don't know if we come here this whole thing is going to be inside a section so we are going to have sections on almost all the pages right so each section should have a margin top of three red okay and they should have a width of 100 viewport width they should span the whole screen all right so let's proceed and then let's have some styles for our h1s h2s h3s h4s um, h5s okay come on we are going to get to the nav we are going to style our nav um, very soon but i think these are very necessary okay these general classes that we are having or these general styles that we are having is very necessary um to prevent us from repeating ourselves okay so we are going to get to the nav very soon we are going to target the nav very soon but then let's proceed and then give all our heading tags a color of color white and then the line height for them is going to be 1.3 okay now let's target each of them so h1 is going to have a font size of 3 rem and then a margin of 1 rem for the top and bottom and then 0 for the left and right let's target the h2s as well font size of 1.7 rem and then a margin of 1 rem top and bottom and then 0 for the left and right let's target the h3s as well the h3s are going to have font size of 1.1 rem and let's see margin of 0 0.8 rem for the top 0 for the left and right and then 0 0.5 rem for the bottom okay now i'm going to get the h4s as well and then the font size is just going to be 1.1 uh, rem that should be good right and we don't have any h1s or anything like that right now but it's good we have them we have them styled already okay so that when we have them the styles will just kick in now before we style the nav let me target every anchor tag okay every link is going to have a color of color white okay so these links that we have here in our nav should also change okay so we have them as white and i'm going to set a transition okay so we are going to have some hover effects and all of that so on hover we should have them change okay smoothly instead of having a sudden change okay so we are going to set a transition of the variable transition that we have okay which is all 300 milliseconds is okay yeah so that's for our anchor tags now all images should be displayed block okay they should have a width of a hundred percent of the appearance width and an object fit of cover and that's all for our general classes for now okay so let's proceed to style our nav let me copy this comment that i have up top paste it in here down here it's going to be for the nav okay so let's proceed and then start styling our nav all right so remember we put it inside a nav tag right so let's give that a background of 
come on color let's do color primary okay let's give it that primary background the width is going to span the whole screen so width is going to be 100 viewport width and then the height is going to be 4.5 rem okay now i'm going to set the position to be fixed okay so that it's always fixed on the screen a top of zero and then a z index of 10 okay so that it sits on top of everything on the page so let's save and we have that all right i'm actually going to give this a box shadow as well box shadow of zero for the x axis one room for the y axis one room for the blur and then an rgb a of zero 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 and then zero point two now let's proceed and then i'm going to grab these two buttons that we have down here okay we don't need them on the large screen so i'm going to display them now so let's grab them they are inside a button tag let's target the nav so nav button and then let's display them now all right and oh come on yeah let's proceed and then grab the nav container which is specific to the nav okay so we have the container itself and then the nav container okay actually you know what i'm going to go ahead and then give our image okay we already have that okay so yeah let's proceed so the nav container is going to have a height of 100 percent of its parent height and then display of flex so its parent height is 4.5 rem okay so that's going to be the same here so we display flex we are going to align items to the center let's see what we get yep so we have that and then i'm going to justify content to be spaced between okay let's save and that's what we have uh, is there no problem here so we have the logo and then we have these okay uh, okay you let's proceed i think everything will be fixed is because of the image that um actually let me just grab the avatar okay and then style it i'm going to give that a width of three rem or oh, let's do 2.5 rem a height of 2.5 rem as well and a border radius of 50 percent okay to make it a cycle and then i'm going to set overflow to be hidden and let's give it a border of 0 0.3 rem solid and then color bg save and we have that now for this height we could actually do aspect ratio of one is to one okay so even if we come here and change for instance we change the width to five the height is also going to be five okay so you could do that if you want but let's just keep it height and then width okay so that's what we have now let's target the ul okay so remember inside of the nav container we have the logo and then the ul okay which contains these now let's target the ul well actually let's target the um the logo first okay so logo nav logo that's the, uh, the class we gave it let's give that a font weight of 600 and then the font size of 1.2 rem okay yeah so that's what we have and i'm going to grab the nav items okay we gave the ul a class of nav items so we are going to display that flex and then align items to be center okay let's give that a gap of 4 rem as well okay yeah so that's what we have we have this all right now let's style this okay that is the nav profile remember we gave that you all um yeah this list item we give that a class of nav profile it's going to have that profile um, or the avatar and then these two um, links okay so let's grab that nav profile 
and let's pos position that relative okay these two are going to be positioned uh, absolute so we have to position this relative okay and i'm going to set the cursor to be pointer okay so that it looks clickable when we hover over it all right now i'm going to get the ul okay which has the two links that we have here okay so let's go inside the nav profile and then grab the ul I'm going to position that absolute um let me give it a top of one two five percent let's save yeah that's what we have and it's going to be zero from the right and then i'm going to display that flex but the flex direction is going to be column okay um let me give it a box shadow box let's save and see what we have first you know what yeah let me give it a box shadow of zero for the x axis three ram for the y axis three ram for the blur and i'm going to give it an rgb of zero 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 point four yep save and it looks weird because we don't have any background so i'm going to give that a background of color bg okay we could do um this doesn't look bad yeah let's keep that so now let's grab the links inside of this okay so i'm going to grab the nav profile again and then grab the links they are inside an li so i'm going to grab the links give them a pattern of one rem and actually let me remove this and bring it here okay so that we have the background on the individual colors uh, the individual links sorry so we have that let's display them to be block and then um let me give them a width of 100 percent yeah so that's what we have now i want to change the color for this okay so let me copy this and we can get that using the nth child or just the last child okay uh yeah so let's grab that and the background is going to be the red background so color red and the color the text color mm, what should we use for this let's do color bg oh let's see what we have in the finished projects yeah it's color bg oh i think color bg should do it okay so let's save color color bg what's wrong background color red last child come on oh okay we should get the last child of the list item instead okay so the last child of the list item and then the link inside of that okay so yeah that should give it this all right now i want this to show on hover okay i want this these two links to show when we hover over this um, avatar okay so um let me now nah, let me do it here okay so i'm going to leave a comment here show nav ul when nav profile nav profile on hover you want to get the ul and then the visibility is going to be visible and the opacity is going to be one okay so initially we should have the ul which is containing um these two links set to a visibility of heading and an opacity of zero okay let's actually give this a transition come on 
transition of the variable transition that we have and i think that should do it so let's hover over it and then we have it okay so we are pretty much done with the navbar for now okay we are actually going to make it responsive later on but i think we are good to um proceed to the next section of the page which is going to be um this okay this featured section that we have here this featured post section all right so let's go back to our html and move on to that right for this let me go back to the completed project and then show you so we are going to have a thumbnail okay or this image that we have on the left we are going to have this um, category button that we have here which is going to be a link we are going to have the title as well which is also going to be a link we are going to have the body and then the other okay the other details okay um so we are going to have the avatar of the person who posted it the date posted and the time as well and then the name of the person or the other okay so let's go back and then let's have that in a section tag okay and let's give that a class of featured all right and we are going to have the general container class okay and a class specific to this featured section that we have okay so that is going to wrap around the items that we have inside all right so let's have the post thumbnail so that's the class I'm, come on that's the class i'm giving it and we are going to have the image so let's go inside our images folder and let's grab one of the images that we have for our posts i don't need the alt so i just deleted it and a sibling of this thumbnail is going to be the post info so post underscore underscore info and we are going to have the let me give this a class a class of category button and let's just say wildlife okay and we are going to have an h2 which is going to be i'm going to give it a class of post title and then inside this we are going to have a link okay and that is going to go to the post page or html and it's going to have the um, the post title okay so let me do lorem 10 or lorem 9 that should be good yeah so we have that and below that we are going to have the body so that is going to be inside a paragraph tag let me give this a class of post body i'm going to do lorem 30 yeah that should be good and below this i think yep below this we are going to have a david class of post author okay so the author of the post and first we are going to have the avatar so let's give that a class a let's put that inside a div with a class of post author avatar okay and then let's have the image okay so the source is going to be inside the images folder let's have the avatar i don't know uh, avatar 2 should be good i don't need an alt you could have an alt if you want but i don't need that a sibling of this is going to be the name of the author and then the time of the post okay so let me give that a david class of post author info i don't know if that's the best name for it but that's good and the name is going to be inside an h5 okay um, i don't know that should be good now nah, let me change the name yep and then inside a small tag we are going to have the date and then the time okay so 
June 10, 2020. Come on. June 10, 2022. 20, and then the time. I don't know. So. Yeah, that should be good. Alright, so we are done with the featured post html the html for the featured post let me leave a comment here okay so now let's go back to the css Now let's see what we got from the markup. Okay, so this is the avatar. <laughs> Obviously, that's that's too big, and that's because we set um, our images up here. We set the images to be a hundred percent of the apparent width. Okay, that is why. But we are going to work on that real soon. But before we even get to work on the feature, okay. Let me show you something from the finished project. You can see some of these styles are going to repeat. Okay, so like the category button that we have here, um, like everything here is going to repeat except in this feature, we are going to have the image on the left side. Okay, so I'm going to have a general style for all of them and then I'll target the feature that then um have a specific style for it okay so let's go back and then i'm first going to style the category um, button okay so let me actually change this um, comment to category button right that's what we are going to style so i'm going to grab i think we, we gave that a class of category button so let's give that a background. Let's see what we are doing. Uh, yep. Okay, so this is what we are styling. This is what we are styling, right? So, uh, you know what? I think I made a mistake, okay? The body shouldn't have this color okay it should have the 200 okay so now the paragraph is visible okay so the 200 is this color right here okay yeah so that's what we are using for the body all right so the background here is going to be the background for the category button is going to be primary light we have it but let's actually give it some more styles okay so color the text color is going to be color primary i'm going to display it to be inline block and let's give it a padding come on okay so we have that all right let's give it a border radius okay border radius of we have some border radius variables i'm going to use card border radius uh, let's use the two okay so that gives us border radius so that is 0 0.5 frame okay now i don't know why i called it card border radius this card shouldn't be there but let's just keep that okay the font weights i'm going to make that 600 the font size i'm going to reduce that to 0 0.8 rem and then i'm going to text align to the center on hover okay so card button on hover i want to change the color to color white okay which is fff we have that up top as well Oh, it's actually f2 f2 f e all right and now as i said we are going to have some general styles for our post as well so let's grab this comment come on and have some general styles for our posts 
so jello post house let's first tell the thumbnail okay so the div hood containing this image we give that a class of thumbnail so i'm going to give that a border radius of 5 frame which is the card border radius 5 let me show you real quick okay so that's 5 frame card border radius 5 right right so that's the border radius i'm going to give that a border of one rem solid and color 900 okay so color green 900 overflow is going to be hidden and margin bottom is going to be 1.6 rem let's uh post thumbnail did i make a mistake with the oh god save and we should have this you know what the border radius should be like this okay so five frame here five frame here and zero zero here okay so i'm actually going to do five frame and then zero and that should take care of that now let's proceed and on hover of each post okay in a finished project on hover of each post you see we have the thumbnail grade okay like the saturation of the thumbnail reduces to zero okay and we have some transition so it smoothly reduces to zero so let's grab the post and then on hover we want to get the thumbnail and the image inside of it we want to set a filter saturate of zero okay so it's going to go from a hundred percent to zero and transition is going to be let's just use filter 500 milliseconds is okay yeah this is not happening because um we didn't give the post class to this particular um, post that we have here but if i if i should change this to post you should you should see that oh why is this so sudden post and filter transition okay so you should see that happen but i don't want this to happen on the featured post okay i want it to happen only on the actual post that we have down here as you can see in the finished project we don't have that effect on the featured post okay yeah so let's proceed and what else do we need to do let's get the post author i'm going to display that to be flex and the gap is going to be one rem margin top of 1.2 rem as well let's save so this is what we are styling now and the post author avatar okay so this avatar that we have down here let's give that a width of 2.5 rem a height 2.5 rem as well border radius of card border read come on card border two or should i do three three should be good and an overflow of heading let's save and we have it okay we have this great all right so now we can proceed to style or to change the style for the feature okay all the other posts posts that we are going to have all these posts are going to have these styles okay but we just want to put this image on the left for the featured post so let's go ahead and then do that so i'm going to copy this comment paste it down here change this to come on featured and let's go ahead and install the featured okay so we give that a class of featured that's the section we give the section a class of featured let's give that a margin top of 8 rem 
okay so that brings it down i'm going to grab the featured container which is specific to the featured posts i'm going to display that um, to be great of course and the grid templates columns is going to be 1fr 1fr and the gap between is going to be four rows. okay so we have this all right don't mind this um you know what actually we should mind it let's correct that right now so i'm going to get the featured and then the post thumbnail okay inside the featured okay this post thumbnail i don't want it to stretch full height okay of its container so i'm going to set the height to fit content let's save and we have this all right we are actually going to work on the responsiveness once we are done with this um, page all right so that is all for the featured okay so let's go ahead and then move on to the next section which is going to be the posts section okay so plural posts all right so let's go back to our html all right so let's get back to the finished project and i'm going to show you something so all of these are going to be all of them are going to be inside a section with a class of posts plural right and each of these is going to be a post which is singular okay so that is what we are going to do in the html so let's get back here and we are going to have a section with a class of posts of course we are going to have our container and then our um, specific container class which is um, for this posts all right now each post is going to be an article right with a class of posts and inside of it we are first going to have um, our thumbnail okay so let's put that inside a div and we should have the class that we have here okay since it is styled already that is why we had um let me show you that is why we had these general styles okay so we have post thumbnail post um author and all that we're going to repeat that so that these styles um, have effects on them okay so come on let me go back to the html so we are going to have the thumbnail so post thumbnail and then inside of it of course we are going to have our image so i don't know blog 2 i think that should be fine i don't need i don't need the alt okay but of course you can keep it if you want okay so below that we are going to have our info and then for the info we are going to have the category button okay so let's give this a class of category button and i'm just going to say category okay or wildlife which is one of the categories come on wildlife <laughs> okay now below this we are going to have the title for the post okay which is going to be inside an h3 and i'm going to give it a class of post title it should be in the link so that it takes us to the post page and i'm just going to do lorem 10 okay i think that should be good yeah below the h3 we are going to have our body which is going to be inside the p tag let's give the let's give that a class of post body as well just like we have in the featured and for this i'm going to do lorem 24 or 23 uh, i think that's too much yeah that's good and then we are going to have our post author okay so we're there with a class of post author and let's first have the avatar so post author avatar right i'm going to have the image so let's go into our images and i'm going to 
choose avatar three. Post author info where it's going to have the name. Let's put that inside an H5. So by I don't know John Mills. Uh, small tag where it's going to have the time. So let's say June 13, June 13, 2022, and then the time. Okay, all right, so that's all for one post. Okay, so let's see what we have. Okay, so we have this, and our styles just kick in like that. Okay, because we have them already. Okay, we have them here already. All right, now I'm going to duplicate this. Okay, we are going to have multiple posts. Okay, so I'm, go I'm going to duplicate this particular post which is inside the article tag duplicated uh, I don't know multiple times that should be good and I think we can now go ahead and then style it okay we are going to go ahead and then style it and then I'll come back to change the content okay of course in PHP we are not going to duplicate it okay we are just going to have one of them and then we are going to look through to um, generate or to loop through and then fetch the data from the database okay so this is going to be the end of the posts section now let's move on i'm going to copy this comment paste it here and then change this to posts so that's the post section that we are going to style all right so this is very very this is going to be very very simple okay because we have most of the styles done already for us okay so let me put this side by side so that you see what's going on and the only thing we have to do is to target the post container posts container okay Where is the direct div inside the section the post section we are going to target that and then display that to be great of course and then the great templates columns is going to be one fr one fr one fr so we are just going to repeat three times one fr let's save and this is what we have okay now let's have some space a space of i think five gram that should be good yeah not too bad i think and let me give it a margin bottom of five frame as well okay so this is what we have it doesn't look bad at all but i think that's too much so i'm just going to delete some of the posts uh, let's go up yeah let's see what we have okay so we have seven I think nine should be good. Let's just keep the seven, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and then change some of the contents real quick. So I'm just going to change the thumbnail. So we have the first thumbnail, which is um, thumbnail or block two. This is going to be block three. So I'm just changing the images from the images um, folder that we have, okay? Which is in here. So I'm just changing these images that we have. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. So block three, I'm going to change the avatar as well. The avatar is going to be, I don't know, four. Block five or block four. The avatar is going to be five. Not thirty-five, five. Block six. The avatar, the avatar is going to be seven. Let's go back, and now we have it. Okay. All right. So we are we are done with the posts. Okay. We are basically done with the posts. Now let's go ahead from the finished project. The next section is going to be this um, category section. Okay. So let's go back to our HTML and have the markup for that 
all right so that is going to be inside a section with a class of category buttons and inside of it we are going to have that general container class and another class of category buttons container okay which is going to be specific to this um this right here okay now we are just going to have an anchor tag with a class of category button which we already have styled so we could just say wildlife or category right whatever it is and duplicate this um six should be good or maybe four um sorry eight in the finished project i have how many categories okay i have only six so six should be good yeah so that's it maybe i should make this i don't know dynamic we have wildlife um we have travel category we have art we have science and technology and technology right and what else do we have we have food and then music okay those are the last two music and we're actually going to be able to add or delete categories okay so it doesn't matter how many categories that you have all right so that's all for the html for the categories section okay and we have most of these styles already so let's just go ahead and then have the rest of the styles for this particular section that's going to be category buttons all right and we have most of these styles already which is this okay so let's just give the styles specific to this particular category section all right so let's just see what we have and we have this okay which does not look bad at all it does not look bad but i just want to have some more stuff so i just want it to look like we have in the finished project so let's go ahead and then i'm going to give it um let's target the category buttons section okay i'm going to give that a pattern of four run for the top and bottom and then zero for the left and right okay so we have some space there and then border top is come on border top what's wrong okay i don't have a semicolon but the top is going to be two pixels solid and then color gray 900 okay uh, let me make this a little bigger and then border bottom is going to be two pixels solid the same thing okay so color 900 yeah all right so i'm going you know what now let's target the container i'll say so now let's target the container so category buttons container that's the class we container that's the class we gave it we are going to change the width to fit content okay and we are going to display grid and the grid template columns is going to be repeat three times one fr and let's give them a gap of one room and this is what we have which does not look bad all right so we are almost done with our home page okay we only need the footer then we'll move on to making this whole thing responsive okay so let's go on ahead and then have our footer section let's go back to our html this should be uh category 
buttons now let's have our footer all right so our footer is going to be inside a footer semantic tags okay and right here let's see from the finished project we are going to have our socials first and then we are going to have these um, four i think they are going to be inside an an other list and finally we are going to have this copyright and right here okay all right so let's first have our footer socials that's going to be inside a div with a class of footer socials come on plural okay and each of them is just going to be a link the first one is going to go to um, youtube and let's set the target to be blank okay so that it opens in a new tab and we are going to get the youtube logo so hopefully it's here yep let me just copy that and then paste it in here okay i'm just going to duplicate this four times is that four i think so yeah so we are going to have youtube we are going to have facebook instagram linkedin and then twitter facebook instagram um uh, what linkedin and then i think linkedin is linkedin.com or dot net or something like that i'm not really sure because i'm not really um apart from youtube i'm not really active on any of these platforms so so let's grab the let me just remove this okay so that you don't think i'm active on the i'm not there so so i'm going to grab the icons for each of them okay so we have facebook instagram linkedin and twitter let's grab facebook facebook uh, which one did i use in the finished project let's see okay f replace this um is it twitter twitter is next so twitter oh instagram before twitter twitter is last but let's just replace that so that's twitter let's grab instagram instagram I'm going to use this i hope that's what i used in the finish in the finished um, project and finally we are going to grab linkedin okay which is this right here that's what i used linkedin yeah so that's all and i think we should go ahead and install these okay and then we'll come back to the markup for the rest of the folder uh, folder elements so let's go on ahead to the css i'm just going to copy this comment here paste it down here and let's style our footer let me put this side by side so that we see what we're doing come on all right so let's grab the footer and let's give that a different background let me scroll down i'm going to give that a background of color green 900 give it a pattern of five frame for the top and bottom and then zero four actually zero four okay so i'm going to have five frame for the top zero for the left and right and a zero for the bottom as well a box shadow i'm going to give it a box shadow of inset okay is the box shadow is going to be inset and then on the x axis is going to be zero 1.5 for the y axis and then 1.5 for the blur and it's going to be black of course with two um with 20 percent alpha all right so we have this 
shadow in here looking like this is sitting on top of the folder which is really cool um let's see let's proceed and then start the photo socials okay so we give that a class of photo socials and i'm going to give them a margin of margin in line of auto okay let's give that a width of face content save and we have it in the middle right um i'm going to give that a margin bottom of five rem okay so we have some space and i'm going to display flex justify content is going to be space between align items is going to be center and then let me give them a gap of 1.2 rem so a gap between them is going to be 1.2 rem all right now let me grab the links inside of it okay so each of these icons are inside an anchor tag so we are going to give those a background of color bg border radius of 50 percent width of 2.3 rem same for the height and i'm going to display flex for them as well okay and align items to the center justify content to the center as well let's save and we have this now let's have some hover effects for them so i'm going to copy and then paste and on hover i want to have a background of color white and the color itself okay so the icons are going to be color bg so we'll just a flip around for the hover basically all right so that's good that's for our folder socials now let's proceed or let's go back to our folder and then let's con uh, let's continue with the remaining elements folder elements okay i'm going to have a container class okay um and another class footer container and inside i'm going to have four articles okay but well, let's focus on the first one first and inside of this i'm going to have an h4 for this i'm going to say categories right and i'm going to have an under an added list we're going to have li's of course and then um links okay anchor tags this is just going to be the you know what yeah so let me just do this duplicate it copy wildlife so wildlife travel science and technology food and music okay wildlife let me just type this out travel what was the next one music oh god i forgot travel science and technology music science and technology oh god okay food that's the last one right yeah perfect okay so i'm just going to duplicate um this article for three times so we are going to have four of them the next one is going to be support online support um we are going to have call numbers let's have emails as well emails and then social numbers or social support that makes more sense uh let's delete this and then maybe location let me just delete this and the next one is going to be blog this probably don't make sense but as i said it's just dummy content okay
the blog um, application is not going to focus on the footer section so okay we have popular categories let me just delete the last one this last one is going to be permalinks so we have home blog about services and then contact can delete this and that's all for now okay actually let's have the copyright okay so footer copyright copyright and inside it i'm going to have a small tag so i'm going to have the copyright symbol let me actually write copyright first and then copy negator tutorials all right so that's all for our markup for the footer okay let's get back to the css and continue with the styles footer container and here i'm going to display that let's first see what we got okay from the markup okay so this is what we have i'm going to display that to be grid and the grid template columns is going to be repeat four times one fr okay yeah so this is what we have now i'm going to get the h4 for so footer h4 and the color is going to be white and the margin bottom is going to be 0 0.61 yeah so that's what we have and i'm going to grab all the links okay so footer the links inside of the ul i'm going to grab those and change the color to be a little transparent okay so although they are already white let me actually just set the so they are already white right so i'm just going to set the opacity to 0 0.75 and that's all we need for the anchor tags now i'm going to have some hover effects for them so footer ula on hover i want to set the letter spacing to be let's do 0 0.2 rem so on hover we should have some hover effects and set the color back to white or the opacity rather opacity i'm going to set that back to one okay so that is going to be 100 percent so from 75 percent to 100 percent all right let's have some space between them okay so um let me give them let me actually target the eyes okay and give them a pattern of 0 0.4 for the top and bottom and then 0 for the left and right okay yeah so this is what we have now on small devices we are going to have different styles um, the alignment is going to be a lot of different but for now i think this looks pretty good now let's target the copyright and install that as well so footer uh we, we give that a class of footer copyright copyright text align that to center pattern is going to be 1.5 frame for the top and bottom and then zero for the left and right border top is going to be two pixels solid color bg let's save that and see what we have and that's it and i'm going to or should i leave it like this i think this is good no bad i wanted to change the you know what let me give it a margin top of forum yeah that's better 
and yeah i think this is good okay Yeah, so the socials are opening in new tabs. Everything is working perfectly. And I think we can proceed to the media queries. Okay, let's go on ahead and make this home page responsive. But I think, let's check. Let me compare this to the... Okay, so I think this info here is just too congested. Okay, so um i'm going to grab the okay let me check i think i should this should be styled okay we gave some margin to the h3 oh god this should be margin okay all right okay so that's it all right so now let's proceed and then make this home page responsive okay let's go on ahead and then make this responsive i'm actually going to open we are going to have two media queries the first one is going to be for tablets and then the second one is going to be for mobile phones all right so let me actually um let me put this this is going to be ipad yep that's good and let's go on it and make this responsive okay all right so i'm going to scroll down let me copy a comment come back down and then i'm going to so this is going to be media queries this is going to be for uh, tablets okay or let me just say medium devices yeah okay so at media screen and we're going to do max width okay of 1024 pixels so anything below the screen size i want to have a specific style okay i want to have these styles kicking all right so first i'm going to have some general um styles okay so let's grab um the container class that is the general container class and then the width on this screen size first let's check okay let me just grab the body and then set the background to red okay so that we just see yeah so that is um okay so let me just go out here and then show you real quick so anything below this okay so this right here is the breakpoint okay so this and below so anything on tablet is going to have these styles that we are going to um give okay let me go back to the tablet view and i'm going to remove this body 10 right here this red background so let's grab the general container class and the width is going to be the container width md okay md for medium that we have at the top i think the width is um, 88 percent okay so that is going to be the width on medium devices let's grab the section and i think let me check okay i'm, I'm going to check the margin we had for okay so the margin top was three rem and okay so let me just keep that that's enough now i'm going to grab the h2 and set the font size to 1.6 rem okay i'm going to grab the h3 as well and the font size is going to be 1.2 rem and lastly i'm going to grab the h5 and the font size here is going to be 0 0.8 rem all right so that is for the general styles okay that is for the general styles let me actually leave um, a bit of a comment here so i'm just going to say general 
Okay, that's good. All right, now let's move on and style the nav. Okay, let's move on and install the nav or the nav. Bar. Now on mob on mobile and then on tablet, it is going to be a drop down. Okay, just like we have in the finished um, project. Okay, so this is how it's going to look. It's going to be a drop down. Okay, and we are going to create um, this animation ourselves as well. All right, so that is what we are going to have. And as you know, we displayed this button or this icon. We displayed it none. Okay, on um, large devices, but here on medium devices, we are going to need that hamburger icon and then this close icon as well. Okay, so let me let's go back and then let's do that. Okay, now I'm going to target the button. I'm going to show them on medium and then on small devices so i'm going to display them inline block okay and then the font size is going to be 1.5 rem i'm going to give them a background of transparent come on yeah and the color is going to be white and the cursor is going to be pointer okay i want them to look clickable so yeah that's what we have we have them here okay and this doesn't look responsive because as you know we have some um, gap between the list items that we have here okay that is why it is overflowing but we are going to um, address that right now okay so one thing is by default this close icon shouldn't be showing okay the button with the close icon shouldn't be showing so i'm going to grab that so button and we give that an id of close underscore underscore nav btn right nav btn and i'm going to display that none okay so that is not going to show by default okay we are only going to have the hamburger and now i'm going to grab the nav container class and position that relative and i'm doing that because you're going to position this uh ul the ul containing this nav or this list items you are going to position that absolute so the parent which is the nav container should be positioned um, relative all right so let's go on ahead and then grab the nav items okay the ul um, with a class of nav items okay so nav items and as i said i'm going to position that absolute change the flex direction remember it's already displayed flex okay so here i'm just going to change the flex direction to column and from the top is going to be let's do 100 percent and from the right is going to be zero yeah so that's what we have let me actually refresh this uh we still have some overflows and that is because of these um, posts that we have here but as we proceed with these um, sections i think the overflow is going to be um, taken care of okay all right so i'm going to give it a width of 12 rem i'm going to align items to i'm going to do it flex start just for content come on justify content is going to be center and then i don't need any gap between them so gap is going to be zero and let's save and see what we have okay so all right so from here i'm going to grab the list items okay so now items and then the li i'm going to make them 100 percent of the appearance width and then the height is going to be 4.5 rem okay i'm going to display them flex i'm aligning items to the center and let's save and see what we have okay nothing much there i'm going to give them a box shadow of negative two rem on the x axis three rem for the y axis seven rem for the blur and the color is going to be an rgba of zero 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 and then zero point seven okay let's save and we are now seeing 
um clearly because we don't have a background okay so let me give this a background uh, let's just do color gray 900 for now we're actually going to put the background on the um on the anchor tag okay inside of the li but for now for us to just see what's happening let's just keep it here all right so let me give a border top of come on border top border top of one pixel solid color bg and i think that's enough okay so let's grab the li sorry the anchor tag okay so now items li and then the anchor tag inside of it and i'm going to give that a border radius of zero okay a width of a hundred percent of its parent and the height is going to be same hundred percent background let me just copy this okay i want to keep the background on the let me give it a pattern okay zero for the top and bottom and then two room for the left and right all right now i'm going to display flex and align items to the center okay yeah so that looks perfect and i think for this style we are like we have enough to actually make this or to add the javascript okay to toggle between this to toggle this so um i don't think oh okay do we have a problem there you know what let me start the now profile okay before we proceed to the javascript i'm going to get the now profile and give it a background okay let me just paste what i just copied let's go on and i'm going to grab the nav profile ul okay and the top is going to be a hundred percent and the rate is going to be a hundred percent as well let me actually grab the avatar as well avatar or the nav profile and then the avatar inside of it the margin left is going to be two rem okay so that it aligns with the padding that we gave to the ace okay um yeah so that we have that alignment okay uh, yeah so that's good all right so i think we can proceed to add the javascript okay to toggle this all right, so let's go on ahead and do that. So I'm going to open the JavaScript file and let's make sure it is actually linked. Okay, so let's come down here to the bottom of the HTML and link our JavaScript. Okay, so script source is going to be our main JS. Okay, and to make sure everything is linked, I'm just going to do an alert, save and we should have an alert okay here perfect so everything is linked now by default this shouldn't be showing okay the ul or this drop down should be shouldn't be showing so um on the nav item so i'm going to display it none okay and when we click this that is the hamburger icon then it should show okay and when we click the hamburger icon as the nav items show we should have the close icon okay so that we can close it back okay so remember we gave the icons we gave or the buttons we give them some ids okay so that is what we are going to grab on yeah so we have open nav button and then close nav button okay so let's grab those and i think yeah so let's just do that okay so first i'm going to grab the nav items 
so const nav items and i'm going to do document or query selector and it's a class okay so nav underscore underscore items all right to duplicate it twice i'm going to grab the um, nav open btn or open nav btn yeah and that is an id of open underscore underscore nav btn right and also i'm going to grab the close nav btn as well which was also an id okay we gave that an id of close nav btn all right so we have what we need to make this happen okay so um i'm going to add event listener on this okay on this button right so open nav btn dot add event listener this is going to be a click event and i'm going to run a function called um, open nav all right and I'm, I'm going to have that function here so open nav arrow function and i just want to grab the nav items okay and set the style display back to flex remember initially it was displayed flex okay before we gave it that display now all right it was displayed flex at the top here let me show you uh, nav items yeah it was initially displayed flex okay so that is what we are doing here we are set we are setting it back to display flex and when i do that okay so let me show you i'm going to click it and i have it okay but i can't close it because um, the close icon is, is not even showing so i want to get the i want to remove this that is the open nav open nav btn i want to get that and set the style display to none okay i want to hide it and the close nav btn should now show okay so it's basically going to replace the um, open nav btn so that is going to be displayed in line block all right so we should have that functionality let me click and then we have it okay now we should be able to close it of course so let me leave a comment here um this opens now menu or drop down okay and this is going to close it okay so close nav btn we are going to put an event listener on that that is going to be a click event and it's going to call the close nav function okay so let me just duplicate this function and this is going to close that drop down all right so it's going to be close come on now what do we want to do here we want to set this back to display of none the hamburger should show now so inline block is going to be for the display and we should hide this icon okay so this is very very simple so now we should have the functionality okay but this looks boring it just appearing all of a sudden and i want it to look just like we have in a finished project okay i want i want it to have this um, animation effect okay so let's go back to the css and here we are going to have some animation okay down here all right so we are going to have some animation here let me leave a comment okay let me say now drop down animation all right so as keyframes i'm just going to call this animate drop down okay that's the name of the animation and 
initially on this to start flat in our face okay so i want to rotate each of the list items okay each of the li's i want them to face us i want them to lie flat in our face okay so so they are going to lie flat on the um uh, x axis all right so transform rotate on the x axis 90 degrees okay so they are going to lie flat in our face and it's going to seem like they've disappeared let me put the animation on the list items okay so animate drop down that's the name of the animation it's going to take uh, let's do four seconds for now um it's going to have a delay as well of zero seconds and then forwards okay the force is going to make sure we have uh, like we have the effect of the animation that is set at the end i don't know if that makes sense okay so you are going to understand that but at the end of the animation i want okay so at a hundred percent i want the transform to be back to zero degrees okay so it's going to go from 90 to zero right and actually let me set an opacity on this opacity of zero so it's going to go from zero to an opacity of one okay so i'm going to yeah so this is what we have so far okay and that's too slow so i'm going to change this to 400 milliseconds that's too fast i want you i want you to see what's actually happening so one second should be good all right and i want them to flip from the top okay each of them is going to flip from the top okay so um do, do, do. okay so i'm going to set the transform origin to top and that should do it okay so they are flipping from the top but i want to have delay on each of them okay so this one is going to start immediately but the next one is going to take some time before it, it starts and this one is going to take longer to start and it's going to go on like that okay so um i'm going to let's put animation um, animation delay on each of them okay so the nth child i'm going to grab the second one so initially we are going to have, we are going to have animation delay of zero and the second one is going to have animation delay of um let's do 200 milliseconds okay let me change this back to 400 milliseconds yeah okay so we have that notice the second one it takes some time before it animates in right and let me just duplicate this and do it for the rest okay so third one is going to take 400 milliseconds it's going to take 600 milliseconds that's going to be the fourth one and then we are going to have the fifth one which is going to take 800 milliseconds and you know what we don't need to have another one okay actually let me go back to the html and comment this out okay the sign in i'm going to comment it out it's either we have a sign in or we have this okay in the finished project okay we, we can have both at the same time so let me just uncomment one and now we should have the animation okay yeah just like we have in a finished project okay so as i said the forwards that we have here is just going to make sure um the end state of the animation stays as it is okay if you don't have that then it's going to go back to the initial style that we gave it okay so if i should remove this 
and as you can see they vanish okay yeah so that's why we have the forwards so that is the animation all right so for the featured it's going to be very very simple we're just going to grab the featured container and change the gap to three rem i'm just going to reduce the gap okay so the space isn't too much and that's all for the featured let me grab the posts container as well and the grid templates columns here is going to be waterfall waterfall so 50 50. so we just left and then the right okay and that is what we have not too bad i guess what is happening okay we have some bugs but i think we are going to work on them all right i think it's because of the footer okay so um i think that's all let me actually reduce the gap okay the gap is too much so the gap is going to be 3 ram here as well all right that's all for the posts i'm going to grab the category buttons okay the category buttons container and actually i think that looks good oh yeah that doesn't look bad although it's overflowing but i think it's because of the footer that we have here all right so let's just forget about that and then go on to grab the footer container okay and here the great template columns is going to be wonderful wonderful okay so if i sh if i refresh you save and that's what we have okay yeah so that's that's it so the photo was the reason why we had an overflow now everything is perfect like in the finished um project right all right so i think we are done for the media queries for medium devices or for tablets okay so next let's have one for small devices as well or for uh, mobile phones okay so i'm just going to copy this comment come back down and then paste it down here and this is going to be for small devices oh uh come on <laughs> media queries small devices yeah all right so at media screen and mags width um let's just do 600 pixels okay and for 600 pixels and below i want let me just show you the breakpoints so 600 pixels let me just give that a background of red let's see the breakpoints okay so right here is the breakpoints all right so let me just remove this all right so this is the responsive view it doesn't look great on mobile so we are going to work on that okay so on mobile i want to get the section every section is going to have a margin top of two rem okay from there the h1s are going to have font sizes of two rem i think we have that at the top here oh uh nope okay now let's go on ahead and then target the featured okay the nav is taken care of okay so let's grab the featured and then the margin top is going to be six rem all right now i'm going to grab the featured container and here the great template columns is going to be one of our great so this is how i want it to look um, i'm going to reduce the gap to zero yeah so that looks perfect now let's move on to the posts okay the posts 
so i'm straight ahead going to grab the posts container and the grid templates columns is going to be one of our nice going to change the gap as well to um uh that, that's okay right i think we had what was it here it was three three rem right so i think that's that's all right now let's move on and then grab the post thumbnail and i think that looks perfect as well okay so what else do we need to do should we move on to the categories yeah so let's grab the category buttons container and the great templates columns is going to be one of our one of our all right so that's better that looks better now yeah the footer should change here as well okay so we should have a different style for the footer so footer container the great template columns is going to be one of our we are going to align items to the center and come on the gap is going to be two room let's save and this is what we have i'm going to align um i'm going to text align everything to the center as well okay so let, let me even remove this align items all right so why do we have this problem here what is happening and oh god okay so i'll figure that out okay but for now i think we should proceed to create the other pages let me view this on another device hmm. what is happening why do we have an overflow all right i think we should move on to the um, the other pages okay all right so now the next page that we are going to take care of is going to be the blog page okay which is going to be very similar to the home page so i'm just going to go on ahead and then copy everything on the home page okay I'm going to copy and then paste it inside here let me actually close this javascript we are not going to leave that for now and i'm going to remove the featured okay on the blog page we are not going to need the featured post so i'm just going to remove that section yeah so i'm just going to remove that and we are going to replace that let me just show you from the finished um project okay refresh this and let's go to the blog page all right so we are just going to have the search okay and the posts and everything is just going to be just like we have on the home page all right so let's go back so for the search i'm just going to give that i'm going to put that inside a section with a class of search bar okay and we are going to have a form inside it okay so let me give this form a class of container and search underscore underscore bar container okay okay so the method here is going to be post but i think let's reserve that for the php when we get to the back end okay now inside here we are going to have a div and i'm going i'm not going to give it any class i'm just going to have the set icon let's grab that from icon scout okay i'm going to go back here and then search for uh, search search icon which one did i yeah so let me just grab this and i'm going to have that here okay and next to it is going to be an input okay so an, in, an input with a type of search 
and the name let's just reserve that for the php as well i'm going to have a placeholder of search okay and a button so outside the div i'm going to have a button of submit there's going to be a submit button i'm going to give that a class of btn and i'm just going to say go okay so let's see what we have let's go to the blog page and we have basically and this is um under the nav okay so let's just go on ahead and install it let's bring it down and give it some more styles okay so that is for the search and basically that's all the html we need for the blog page okay so this is going to be the end of search let's go back to the css and let's go up here yeah and i'm going to leave a comment so let me just grab one of these comments that we have this is going to be for search all right so remember we gave the search section at um a class of search bar right come on search underscore underscore bar i'm just going to give it a margin top of seven rem okay to push it down okay so now we have it we have the icon the input and then the button all right um let me actually put this side by side so that we see what we're doing all right i'm going to grab the search bar container and position that relative okay i'm going to give it a width of 30 rem the background of the variable color gray 900 and i'm going to display its flex okay the flex direction of course is going to be row which is by default so i'm going to have an align items of center and justify content of space between let's save and that's what we have not bad now i'm going to set overflow to hidden and let's give it a pattern of 0 0.6 for the top and bottom and then one room for the left and right all right let me give it a um, border radius of card border radius 2 and let me change the color okay so um let's do color gray 300 yeah so that's it okay now let's grab the div okay so the div which contains the search icon and then the input okay so let's grab that i'm going to copy this paste it down here grab the div the direct div inside of it and the width is going to be 100 percent of the parents width i'm going to display that flex and align items to the center all right not much of a difference there but let's proceed the search bar input okay so the inputs that we have here i'm going to set the background to be transparent okay now the margin left is going to be 0 0.7 rem actually before i set it to transparent let's just see how it looks yeah so the margin left shifts it from the search bar uh, sorry the search icon and let me give it a pattern a pattern of 0 0.5 frame for the top and bottom and that's all i need and let me give it a width as well a width of 100 percent so now i can just uncomment this so we have an input and i think all right you let's just i'm going to have a general style for 
every input that we are going to have on this website okay and when i get there i'm going to correct this okay so i'm going to make the text that we insert on the inputs uh, i'm going to make them white okay but for now let's just keep this all right so let me actually grab the placeholder okay or should we just leave it i think the placeholder doesn't look bad oh yeah let me just grab it okay so let's search bar placeholder placeholder the color is going to be just like the icon okay so color grade 300 yeah all right now you know what let's go on ahead and install the button okay and this button style that we are going to give is going to apply for um most of the forms that we are going to have okay so i'm going to just um, copy this comment wait uh, media search come on <laughs> I'm just going to copy this comment come down here paste it and we are going to have our button styles okay button styles so anything with a btn class is going to be displayed in line block they are going to have a width of fit content a pattern of 0.6 rem for the top and bottom and then 1.2 rem for the left and right background color is going to be the color primary and let me give it a border radius of card border radius 2 and the cursor is going to be pointer of course to look for it to look clickable and i'm going to set a transition okay of the transition variable that we have let's save and that kicks in okay yeah so that looks good um i think i should give it a white color as well yeah all right so that looks good now i think we are basically done with our blog okay we are done with our blog um so should we have the media queries now all right so you know what let's go on ahead and then have the media queries for this blog okay so i'm going to go to the media queries for yeah for medium devices and i'm going to have blog okay i'm going to have some stars for the blog page okay so here i'm just going to grab the search bar section and okay you know what let me just grab the container directly and i'm just going to change the width to 60 percent and that's what we need to do here okay so i'm just going to copy this and then on smaller devices i want to change it to the container with md which is 88 percent okay so this is on medium devices but when we get smaller we get the container with md okay which is perfect all right so that's all for the blog page okay so let's see what page should be next yeah okay so let's let's take care of the single post okay so the single post page all right so i'm going to go to um, right posts right and that's the single post page and let me just copy everything from the home page we're going to need the nav and then the footer okay 
let me close the blog okay so we have um we are going to need do we need the categories we don't need that so i'm, I'm going to remove the category buttons all right and the posts as well okay there's going to be a single post page so i'm going to remove the posts all right so we we are just going to have let's click to go to yeah so there's a the single post page and we just have the nav and the footer okay so let me expand this let's actually go full screen all right so from the finished project we just need the title of the post the author just like we have um in the come on in the home okay so we are just going to copy this okay this whole thing from the home page that we built and then we are going to have the avatar sorry we're going to have the thumbnail and then the post um, body okay so those are the things that we are going to have all right so i'm going to have a section with a class of single posts okay and i'm going to have the general container class and another class of single posts underscore underscore container all right now the title is going to be inside an h2 so i'm, I'm just going to load lorem let's do 13 and that, no, that's too much lorem 10 should be good okay that is the title and for the author i'm just going to copy what we have from the finished um, home page okay so i'm just going to copy this it's going to be the same thing right so and we have that styled already so the styles will just kick in all right below that we are going to have the thumbnail okay so and david a class of single post underscore underscore thumbnail and that's going to have the image of course so let's go into our images and then grab one of the blocks okay i don't need an alt so i'm just going to remove that and below this is going to be the body okay so the post body that's just going to be inside a paragraph so just a paragraph let's just do long 40 okay and i'm going to duplicate this a few times let me make this yeah that should be good okay all right so that's all that's all for our single posts okay so let me just copy this comment come down here and then paste it here it's going to be the end of single posts all right so let's go back to our style sheet above the media queries and i'm going to have a comment okay so this is going to be a single post all right so let's style this okay let's just save this and then see what we have from the html so that's what we have all right let's style this real quick all right so i'm going to grab the section with a class of single post and give it a margin of six rem for the top zero for the left and right and then two rem for the bottom let's grab the container so single post container and the width is going to be the form width okay which i think is 40 percent um let's go to the top and then let's confirm that yeah so that's for 40 percent okay uh All right now in the background 
is going to change let's give that the color gray 900 and let's give it a padding as well okay so one rem for the top and bottom and then two rem for the left and right actually let me give it one rem for the top two rem for the left and right and then two rem for the bottom okay so let's save and that's what we have okay not too bad i guess but let's grab the paragraph okay let's grab the paragraph so single post container and then a paragraph i'm going to give it a margin top of one rem um let's give it a line height of 1.7 okay so yeah let me grab the post thumbnail okay so that i'll push it from the other details that we have okay so post thumbnail oh let me be specific here so single post and then the thumbnail I'm going to give it a margin top of 1.5 rem uh, so we'll post post the thumbnail did i make a mistake with the spelling post thumbnail single so post thumbnail okay so that's okay so this should be single post thumbnail no this should be a class save and we have it okay i think this is good okay it is enough or maybe i should make this three room for the bottom here and maybe the post thumbnail should have a bottom as well a bottom margin of one room okay uh to do margin save and that's what we have so this doesn't look bad okay so that's all for the single post um for desktop so now let's go ahead and then make this responsive so on medium devices let me just copy this so this house is going to be for single posts so on medium devices we are just going to grab the single post section and let's just see mm, doesn't look bad but i just want to change the margin top to six rem okay uh, was it already six room let's see let's confirm that single posts okay it's already six room so let's just keep that okay all right so we don't need to do anything here okay on medium devices let me just copy that or cut it and then on mobile i think we are going to have some something change on mobile so on mobile what do i want to do let me grab the single post container okay I'm going to grab that and then the background is going to be transparent transparent and i'm going to set the padding to zero yeah i think that looks good and that's all for single posts okay that's all for the single posts now let's move on to the next let me close this let me minimize it now let's move on to the next page okay all right so i think the next page that we should um work on should be the category um i don't think i did this okay so um i'm just going to 
nope not here okay so on click of the category button it should take us to category posts.html okay and that should be for all the category buttons category where is it okay here category post.html and i can do it for all the posts so let's just actually on the for the php we are going to change the extension anyway so um let's just proceed to the category posts um where is it category posts yeah and basically it's, it's just going to be just like the blog okay just like the blog um or just like the index okay the posts on the index page okay so i'm just going to grab this including the photo of course and then paste it here okay and let's make sure we have the nav as well so i'm going to copy the nav from the index page so from the nav to the doc type copy that and then paste it here too it's just going to be just like the blog page okay so let's save and let's visit that page which is the category post.html uh what's wrong come on category yeah so but one thing we should um let me let me let me confirm this from the finished project okay i think when we click on the category and then come here okay we should have a category title as well okay we should have a category title as well okay so that's just going to be inside the header tag so below the nav we are going to have a header with a class a header come on a header with a class of category title and that's just going to have an h2 and it is just, it's going to say the cat the name of the category okay just like we have in a finished project um all right so that's that's what we are going to start okay so this the finished project and here let's go on and install the category title which is hidden um, below the nav okay so let's go to the css most of the styles are done already because we have classes repeating okay we have the styles and the classes on the same lesson okay so let's just go ahead and then uh, let me go up just copy this comment paste it down here and now we are going to work on the category posts okay all right so here i'm just going to grab the category title that is the header okay this right here i'm going to grab that and i'm going to give it a height of 15 rem okay the margin top is going to be 4.5 rem which is the height of the nav if you could remember and then the background is going to be the color bg or color gray 900 rather that's going to be the background and i'm going to display this grid just so i can place items to the center so the h2 inside of it is, is going to be placed exactly in the middle and then the background yeah that's done already i already gave it a background let's save and this is what we have okay and that is all we need for this okay we don't need to do any media queries or nothing everything is taken care of all right so let's proceed and then move on to these three pages which are going to be the empty pages okay 
let's move on to that okay so i'm just going to close this category post and then the post html and first let's target the about about dot html so this page is going to be very simple as well we just need um oh, i closed the index we just need a nav i'm just going to copy it from here and then paste it we need a footer as well so i'm going to copy that come back here and then paste it and we are going to have a section with a class of empty underscore underscore page okay so all the three pages that we have that are going to be empty are going to have that that class okay so we are going to have the about the services and the contact have the same class okay and in here we are just going to have an h1 and this is just going to say about page okay since this is the about page all right so that's all that is all for this page and now let's go ahead and then um let's see i'm going to refresh and then click on this and this is what we have okay not too bad now let's go to the css and then style that let's style the empty page class that we gave to the section so this is going to be empty page or empty pages all right so we gave that a class of empty page i'm going to let, let's just see what was happening okay so um yeah All right, so let me give it a height of 15, a height of 70 report height. Text align that to the center. And I'm going to display this grid, okay? And place items to the center, okay? All right, so that's what we have. I don't think I even need this text align. all right so that's all for the empty page okay so i'm just going to copy the about and then paste it inside the two other empty pages okay which is contact so here I'm just going to change that h1 to contact contact page and the next one is going to be services okay so let me paste that and then change this to services page now let's save and we have about services and then contact so we have the about page we have services and then we have contact okay so we have all the pages okay all three pages all right so we are moving very fast and that's good so let's just save this and close all the three pages all right now let's move on to the pages with forms okay starting with the sign up page every form is going to or every form page is going to have a section with a class of form section okay so that is going to wrap around the form the actual form that we are going to have on that particular page so here we are going to have a section with a class of form underscore underscore section and inside here we are going to have that general container class and another class which is specific to the form so form section container okay and in here for the sign up page we are going to have sign up that's what it's going to say some pages are going to have errors okay um just like we saw in the demo and some are going to have some success messages as well okay when everything goes well for instance when we sign up on the sign up page and then it redirects us to the sign in page we should have a success message that our um, registration was successful right so here we are going to have a div 
with the class of alert underscore underscore message and this one is going to have another class of error okay meaning this message is going to be an error message so we are going to have a paragraph and let's just say this is an error message okay and below this div you are going to have the actual form okay which is not going to have an action for now and in here we are going to have an input the first one is going to be let's see from the finished project so for the sign up let me just log out here go to the sign up so we are going to need first name last name username email create password confirm password and um the file upload okay and then a, a button as well and we are going to have this as well so let's just go ahead and then do that so we are going to have first name let's just give it a placeholder of first name and i'm going to duplicate this multiple times we are going to have last name last name username email okay let's just use the type of email we are going to have what password so the type is going to be password the placeholder is going to be say create password password again for the type and this is going to be for confirm password and what else for the sign up page let's see yeah we need to upload an avatar on the sign up page so that is going to be inside a div with a class of form underscore underscore control and we are first going to have a label okay so a label for the avatar okay so this input is going to be a file and let's give it an id of avatar which should match this for that we have here okay and let's see let's see what we have so let's go to the sign sign up page and this is what we have which is terrible but all right so we have the file we should have a submit button as well so a button with the type of submit and it is going to say sign up and lastly we are going to have this okay let me just copy that And I'm going to paste this okay so this is going to take us to the sign this is going to be an anchor tag and it's going to take us to the sign in dot html paste that okay so that is all for this sign up page now let's go on ahead and then style this okay and for the sign up page we don't need a nav okay we don't need a nav and then the footer okay actually you know what let's just have it for now in a php we are going to remove it all right in a php we are going to remove the nav and then um and every page of course should have some this and a head and a body so yeah let's just do that from here okay i'm just going to copy from here paste it and i'm going to close the body okay and the html let's save yeah so let's go on and then let's first see what we have from the html let's refresh and this is what we have okay so i'm going to put this side by side and let's tell this sweetheart Okay, so I'm going to scroll down. Empty pages. 
all right so let me grab this comment right here paste it down here and this is going to be for general form so this is going to be the styles for every form that we have on this website all right so we give the section a um, class of form section right so here i'm just going to display grid so that i can place items to the center let me give it a height of 100 viewport height okay so i'm going to get the form section container and set the width to the variable form width okay now let's start the alert okay we give that a, um, a class of alert message and the pattern is going to be let's give it a background first i'm going to change that background but just so we see what's happening i'm going to give it a pattern of 0 0.8 frame for the top and bottom and then 1.4 for the left and right margin bottom is going to be one rem border radius of card border radius 2 let's save and this is what we have okay let me remove that background for now okay so for the alerts we are going to have two um two types okay the error and then the success so for the error we are going to have another class of error just like we had in the atmo here okay so we have another class of error right that means this is going to be an error message All right so here we want to have the background to be color red light okay and the color itself or the text color is going to be color red let's save and this is what we have all right and we have another one for success of course so it's just going to be the green color light for the background and then the color itself is going to be the color green okay so if i should change this to success this is going to be a success okay let's target the form okay let's target the form and i'm going to display flex the flag direction is going to be column and let's give a gap of one run between them okay so this is what we have and i'm going to display flex and the flex direction is going to be column okay here too is going to be column and then a gap of 0 0.4 let's save and this is what we have let's target the actual inputs okay let's target the inputs so the inputs and then let's do same these styles are going to apply for text areas as well and select as well okay so they are going to have a pattern of 0 0.8 rem for the top and bottom and then 1.4 for the left and right let's save and that's what we get let's let's change the background okay so let's give it that gray background so color gray 900 yeah i'm going to give it a border radius of card border radius 2 that's nice and um for text areas we shouldn't be able to resize it okay so I'm going to set resize to none and the color the text color as you can see is black just like we had on the blog page remember I, I told you I'm going to change it when we reach here okay so here I'm going to change the color for every input to be color white save and this is what we get okay so now the color for every input is going to be white all right um you know what let's grab 
the small tag okay which is this right here let's grab this and um i didn't give this a class okay this button should have a class let's come down let's come back to the html and this button i'm going i'm going to give that a class of btn let's save and the button styles that we have we had before okay should take effect remember on the blog page we had a button uh, let me show you that real quick okay so these are the styles for the button okay right so let me grab this small tag here and i'm going to set a margin top of one run for it okay so that'll push it it down and i'm going to display block okay now let me grab the link which is the sign in link that we have i'm going to change the color color primary let's save and that's what we have so we are basically done with the form section class okay and this these classes are going to be um we are going to put them on all the form um, pages that we are going to have okay so these styles that we have are going to take effect for all the forms that we have we are going to have on the whole pages okay on all the pages so now let's proceed and i think we are done with um let's make sure this responsive okay all right so i'm just going to go ahead and then make sure this looks good on tablets and on mobile phones okay so it doesn't look bad on mobile and i think it looks pretty good on tablets but on tablets i want to have some padding okay so let's go back to the css and i'm going to scroll down to the media queries for the tablets and down here i'm just going to copy this comment paste it down and this is going to be general form okay let's grab the form section container come on form section container and i'm going to give it a pattern of three rem let's save and do 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 and nothing happens did i forget to set box sizing i did huh all right so let's set box size into border box how could i forget that okay so now we have some padding on tablets okay so here on mobile screens okay so media query for mobiles or for small screens i'm going to paste this let me um do 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 come on so here on mobile i don't want the padding okay yeah so that's how it looks if i don't have this then i'm going to have that padding on mobile let's just go back and this doesn't look great okay so on mobile i'm just going to make sure i remove the pattern that i had on um tablets so on tablets i'm going to have um the pattern on mobile i'm not going to have it and that is all for the sign up page okay how did i forget the box size oh my god sorry for that guys all right let's move on to the next page um let's move on to the sign in page okay it's going to be very similar to the sign up page i'm just going to copy everything on the sign up page and then paste it in here now let's click to go to the sign in page and there's the sign in page right so let's go ahead and then change some things this is going to say sign in of course there's going to be a success message okay and here we only need two inputs okay we need username or email to log in and we only need a password okay we only one password we don't need this avatar here of course and this is going to say sign in 
and here we are going to say don't have an account then let's go ahead and then take you to the sign up page okay let's save and this is what we have just like on the finished project okay so this is the sign in for this um the finished project and this is what we, we just created and this should be responsive as well so this is how it's going to look on mobile and this is how it's going to look on tablet all right now let's take care of all the form pages okay so let's take care of add category add post add users and all that okay so let's go to add categories and i'm just going to copy everything on the sign in page and then paste it inside the add category page right here okay so here you're going to have the same h2 say add cat come on <laughs> category and there's going to be an error message okay if we enter invalid details they um we are going to be bounced back to the same page and here we need um the title of the category we are trying to add and a text area okay so we are not going to need in this so but we need a text area the name the id we don't need those for now but we need the rows okay so for this let me just do four rows and i'm going to give it a placeholder of description okay so the description of this category that we are trying to add we don't need this small tag so i'm just going to remove it we need the button which is going to say add category let's save let's go to add category and this is what we have okay this should be responsive as well so this is how it's going to look on tablets and this is how it's going to look on mobile perfect so that's for the category page now um for this page we should have oh you know what or should we just leave it for this page we should have the nav bar okay so come on why did i close that let me close these two that's the sign up and then the sign in let me open the add category again and i'm going to grab the nav okay from the home page let me grab everything here and yeah let's have the nav as well we are going to have the footer as well so i'm going to go ahead and then grab the footer from the home page copy that and i'm going to paste that down here paste okay so it is going to be our add category page this is also going to be very similar to the next page which is going to be the add post so let me paste that here let me close the add category so let now let's go to add posts okay so same thing but i'm going to change some things around of course um do, do, do. this is going to say add posts so that's what we have here you know what i think i forgot one thing okay for every form okay that that is going to contain a file upload we need to add these attributes of ink type okay and here we are going to select multi-part form data and we we must add this else it is not going to work okay so i'm just going to do same for i think um the sign up page yeah yeah we are going to upload a file okay for the sign up page so for the form i'm going to have an ink type 
of multi-part form data okay let's save that all right let me close it okay so for the ad posts uh you know what let me just remove let me minimize this so we are going to need a title we don't need this actually we need it okay so we have the input there's going to be for the post title um we'll have a we will need a text area for the body of the post there's going to let's make this 10 the rows is going to be 10 and we need to select a category okay so we are going to have a select and we don't need the name for now okay the name the id and all that we don't need that but of course we are going to have some options the value we are going to grab that from the database in the php so the categories um we have what travel and all that okay i'm just going to leave the rest since in the php we're actually going to grab everything from the database so um below this we have the text area what else do we need from let's check from the finished projects let me sign in here one two three yeah so for ad post we have title category we have we have this checkbox for the featured so we are going to have a div with a class of form control and we are going to have an input of checkbox the name and the id we don't need okay we need the id okay because we are going to attach a label label and let's just say it's featured it's featured this should match the id that we have here all right and do, 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 this should say featured and by default it's going to be checked okay by default it's going to be checked and the value is going to be one we are going to work on that when we get to the php so let's just, just leave that for now we are going to upload a thumbnail as well this should come after the text area okay and so we are going to have a form control class and then with a class of form control let's have a label it is going to be for the thumbnail add thumbnail so we are going to have the input we don't need the name for now but id should match the four for the label okay and i think that's all this is going to say add posts save and this is what we have okay this is what we have why is this no what is wrong here form control You know what's here i want i want this to be on the same line okay i want them to be on the same line so i'm actually going to add another class to the form control class so form control with another class of inline should be um they are going to have flex direction of row and they are going to align items i'm going to align items to the center okay and uh, let me actually increase the gap here to six okay so i'm going to go back here and then add the inline class to this okay so now we have it in line all right perfect so that is all for the post okay the ad post and it looks great on mobile and then tablet devices as well all right now let's move on to another
page which is going to be the add user page okay so i'm just going to grab everything from the add post and then paste it on this page so this is going to be add user so let's go to the add user page all right so here um of course we should have the multi-part form data since we are going to be able to uh, um, upload an avatar so let's start uh, let's actually start from the bottom here okay so i'm going to call this avatar add avatar okay um what else do we need so we need two options for a select so this user is either an author or an admin okay and as i said we are going to do all this value and all that in the php but we don't need a text area for this um what else don't we need we don't need this of course um we're going to keep this error message so we need the name of the person or the first name we need actually we could just grab everything from the sign up page okay because this is going to be very similar to the sign up page so i'm just going to grab everything here nope from the form okay i'm going to grab everything in the form and then paste it in the add user okay um, paste the form here cool. so we need the first name the last name the username the email um, create password confirm password and what else mm. okay so we need a select and i don't need a name now so it is going to be for the user role okay so the options are going to be um zero the value is going to be zero here so you are either an author or an admin okay so th those are going to be the only two options right and that is all actually let me remove this small and this is going to say add user let's save and that's all for the as you add user page okay that's all for the add user page first name last name username email create password confirm password do 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 that's all all right let's make sure this responsive as well yeah perfect all right so we are done with the add pages okay so we can close them all up and let's go to the edit pages okay so we should be able to edit category which should be very similar to add category so i'm just going to copy everything on the add category page and then paste it inside the edit category page okay and this is going to say edit category um, we are not going to need an error message here because if we get bounced then we are going to go directly to the manage cat uh, manage categories page right so for the edit, we need the title of course within the text area for the description and then update category okay and I think that's all for this. Okay, so let me go to the um, edit category page. And this is what we have. Which should be the same thing we have here. Um, manage categories. Let's go to it. Yeah, so that's the same thing here. Okay, that's the same thing. 
all right now let's move on and then proceed with the other edit pages let me close these up um what else edit post so we should be able to edit post so i'm just going to copy everything on the add post page and then paste it here okay let me do 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 this should be edit put uh, post sorry so let's go to that page okay we don't need that error um yeah of course we will need the categories we will need everything here mm -hmm. they should say uh, change thumbnail or update thumbnail whatever but the button is going to say update post okay and i think that's all we need for this page this should be the, the, um, this should be checked by default oh come on i'll put a check on another thing this should be checked okay i think i made that same mistake here too so i'm going to remove that and then paste it here let's save and we should have it should be the same as um so that's the same thing here we have the title the description okay which is a select the body the featured and then this okay so we have everything done now let's um proceed to another thing lastly we are going to have edit user right so let's go back to the add user copy everything and then paste it inside this edit user page right now let's visit that page edit user uh user okay that's what we have edit i don't need this error message and for edit user we are not going to be able to change the avatar of the user okay we won't be changing the password of the user and the email username as well we are not going to be able to change that this should say update user and let's actually confirm this from the finished project okay so let me visit the dashboard manage users I okay i can only edit the name the first name the last name and the user role okay and that is what we should have here the first name the last name user role and then the button okay so those are the things that we are going to have um, on the pages all right and that's what we have here okay so we are almost done guys magically i thought this is going to be very long but we are approaching the end okay so the next three pages or the last three pages let me show you real quick so i'm going to go back to yeah so if i should refresh this the only pages left are one two and three okay so we need to focus on them so the manage categories page the manage users page and then the manage posts page which is the dashboard those are the only three pages remaining so let's go on ahead and then do that okay let me close these two pages and let's start with the manage categories page now from the finished project uh, let's go to the manage categories and we're going to have a section okay with a class of dashboard for each of these managed pages so this page this page and then this page they are all going to have the same section with a class of dashboard okay and we are going to have a div with a class of container and another class of manage 
oh, sorry another class of dashboard container right and that is going to be this background that wraps around the whole elements that we have in here right and inside the container class we are going to have this a side which is going to be the sidebar and this um, main section which has the table okay which has this a2 and then the table so that's how we are going to structure this and this is going to apply for all the three manage pages okay so let's go back to our html and we are going to have the section with a class of dashboard inside we are going to have our general container class and our dashboard container class of course we are going to have the aside okay which is an html5 semantic tag and a main okay let's first work on the aside the aside is going to have an, um, a ul inside of it we are going to have our list items which is going to be a link or it's going to have a link inside of it and each link is going to have an icon okay this icon and then an h5 okay so um let's go back to icon scouts so we should search what icon is that let's see um uh, i don't know let's search right okay so i'm just going to grab this and then paste it in here and that's going to take us to the okay so as i said we are going to have an h5 as well so let me just structure this well okay h5 and this is going to say add posts all right so yeah just going to duplicate this five times so we have add posts we have manage posts we have um, and that is going to take us to the manage posts page of course um oh that's the dashboard okay yeah and we have what add user And then we have manage users. So that is going to take us to manage users page. And then what else do we have? We have add category. And then lastly, we have manage categories, okay? Categories. All right, so let's just change the icons. Okay, so looking at the finished project, I don't know if these icons even make sense, but um, let's see okay i'm just going to use this for the add category okay so add category is going to have that icon paste it and let's search user okay so let me just use this for add user add user i'm going to select this for manage users okay that's going to be for manage users um do, do, do. i'm going to search list okay and i'm going to use this for manage categories and for posts let me search posts let me actually use this okay 
like no does not the exact same thing in the finished um projects but i think this actually makes more sense so let's come to manage posts and then change the icon here let's save and see what we have so let's visit that page which is dashboard no add category instead add category or is it manage categories Let me grab the footer from this side. I'm going to paste that here. And do, do, do. let me grab the nav. Okay. What? I'm going to copy the nav. And then paste that at the top here as well. Let's save. And now something should change okay and we still okay so now we can see our icons okay all right okay so that's for the aside now let's work on the main section which is going to have the table but first we are going to have let's see from the finished project yeah, we are going to have the title which is inside an H2. So an H2 is going to say manage categories. And below that we are going to have a table. Okay, we are going to have a table head and a table body. Okay. Inside the table head, we are going to have a table row. Now the first heading is going to be title. So we need the title of that category. We need the edit button. And then we need the delete button. Okay. And here we are going to have a table row as well. Okay, so there is going to be a link which is going to take us to the edit category page dot html. Let's actually give this a class of btn. Okay, and I'm going to give this another class of sn. Okay, for small, we're actually going to style this button. Okay, we don't have that styles yet but let's just proceed and we're also going to have a delete button so delete and that's going to take us to delete category which we don't have okay all right that's just for one category let me duplicate this twice that's enough and that is all for the um that is all for the manage categories okay now let's proceed let's go on ahead and install this so i'm going to go up top um actually let's just do that here i'm going to copy this paste call this dashboard and first before we move on let's just see what we have from the project okay all right so this is what we got from the html now as i said we are going to have some styles for this so this um delete button is going to be red and they are both going to be small okay with that sm class that we gave it so i'm going to go up top where we styled the button i'm going to go there and then have some styles for the button okay have some some more styles for our button all right so any btn class with another class of sm should have a pattern of 0.3 so we are just reducing the pattern 0.3 for the top and bottom and then 0.7 for the left and right 
font size is going to be reduced um, reduced to 0 0.8 rem let's save that and they are now smaller okay now we are going to have um btn danger okay and that is going to have a background of red i think we gave that class to no we didn't okay so let me go back and the delete button is going to have that class okay so danger so let's save and we have that danger class here okay so let's do same for this and for this delete as well okay let's save and we have all three delete buttons changed all right so um you know what on hover i want to have some effects okay so btn hover i want the background to be white and the color to be the color bg okay uh let's save that okay we have a transition here already so all right now let's move on to the actual dashboard styles okay let's move on to style the dashboard let's put this side by side so that we see what we're doing do, do, do. all right so i'm going to go ahead and then grab the dashboard okay that's the gla uh, the class we gave that's the class we gave to the section i'm going to give that a margin top of six rem let's save and this will be oh god let's go back all right so this is what we have now i'm going to get the container that's dashboard container and i'm going to display that grid okay and the grid template columns is going to be 14 rem for the aside and auto for the um main okay so this is what we get so we have the sidebar and then the main now let's give that a, a let's leave some gap between them a gap of one rem should be good and this container is going to have the color gray 900 for the background okay let's give that a pattern of two rem and a margin bottom of five rem okay nice so this is what we have so far all right now let's target the aside okay so dashboard and the aside i'm going to target the link and I'm actually going to make this bigger okay and then i'm going to break this on the side right so i'm going to grab all the links inside the aside and i'm going to give them a color no you, you let's just forget about the color because they are the white is okay so i'm going to give them a background of the color primary and going to display them flex okay remember the lengths have the icon and then the h5 okay so i'm going to display them flex and the gap between them is going to be one rem i'm going to align items to the center and give them a pattern of one rem as well actually i'm going to do 1.6 rem okay so that's what we get now i'm going to have a hover effect but before that here, let me grab the aside again aside and then the links i want to have border bottom for all the links except for the last one okay so here what i'm going to do is select all the li's okay but not the last child okay and i'm going to select the links inside of them and the border bottom is going to be one pixel solid and then the color gray 900 let's save and we have that okay um 
now let's move on and then give them a hover effect so dashboard aside a on hover i want the background color to be gray 900 no let me make that 700 i'm going to save and hover we have this all right now i'm actually going to go back to the atmo and give one of the links an active class okay we are going to make them we are going to so we are currently on the manage categories page so that's what i'm going to put the active class on i'm going to resize this and then bring it on the side here let's go back to the css so dashboard aside and then the active class okay that should have a background of color gray 900 okay so we are currently on the manage categories page and do, do, do. i think that's all for the aside okay so i'm going to bring this back to the side let me actually make this bigger okay yeah that's good okay and now let's move on to the main section okay so dashboard main and the margin left is going to be 1.5 frame we actually have some gap already but i think that that's not bad okay now i'm going to select the h2 and give it a margin of zero for the top zero for the right two rem for the bottom and then zero for the left all right now and the reason why i'm doing i could just do margin bottom of two rem right but the reason why i'm doing this is because we already gave the h2 some styles at the top okay at the beginning of the css we already gave it some margin top and bottom okay so here i'm just removing them okay and setting only the bottom to um two rem so that is why i'm doing zero zero two zero okay so let's uncomment that i'm actually going to change the line height here to be one all right now i'm going to target the table okay so the dashboard main table i'm going to give that a width of a hundred percent and i'm going to text align to the left okay so that's what we have now let's select the table heads or table headers so dashboard main table and the th let's give those a background of color grade 700 and we are going to give them a pattern as well a pattern of 0.8 rem and a color of white okay color white come on all right let's save and this is what we have okay so let's um give sim similar styles for the tds okay so i'm just going to copy this paste it down here change this to td and let's give that a pattern of 0 0.8 rem border bottom of one pixel solid color gray 200 let's save and that is what we have i'm actually going to change the font size to 0 0.8 rem uh, i think that's too small let's just keep 0 0.9 let's just keep it at a normal font size okay and i'm going to go back here and then change um okay so this is let me make this wildlife what else we had music as well okay so i'm going to go back
okay so that is our categories all right but on hover i want to have some changes okay on hover i want to um change the background for the tds so here i want to select the dashboard main table tr on hover of the tr i want to change the background for the tds okay because we can change the background for the trs directly so i'm going to get the tds inside of the tr on hover and change the background to color bg and the text color is going to be white I'm just going to change the cursor to default and also i'm going to add a transition let me see yeah this is too sudden so i'm going to add a transition of the transition variable that we have and this is what we get okay and that is all for this categories uh, manage categories okay now the next thing we are going to do is make sure this responsive so i'm going to scroll down okay we are first going to handle the responsive um the responsiveness for um tablets and then we'll move on to mobile phones okay all right so on tablets i'm going to grab the dashboard container directly okay and the great template columns here is going to be 4.5 frame and then auto all right so obviously we have to adjust some things in the aside okay so but then i'm going to set the padding to zero and the border actually let me give the background i'm going to make the background transparent let's save that and this is what we have now let me grab the aside and um you know what yeah or oh, should i just keep this let me just i'm going to give that a background of the variable primary background okay and i'm going to uncomment this I'm going to uncomment that out for now i'm going to grab the h5s inside of it okay the h5s that we have on the other side i'm going to grab them and i'm going to display them now i don't need them here okay perfect now i think that's all for this aside do, do, do actually you know what i'm going to make this point three yeah that should be good now i'm going to grab the table okay so dashboard main table and the t head i'm going to get the table head so on tablets i don't need the titles okay um so i'm just going to display them none okay so they are they are gone all right so that is what we have and um let's see what we can do i'm going to grab the dashboard main table and then the tr okay the table row what i'm going to do is to display that to be flex okay and the flex direction is going to be column for us to see the different rows that we have we are going to target come on dashboard i'm going to target the tr and the end chart oh, come on what is wrong okay i'm going to target the even ones okay the even trs and the background is going to be the color gray 900 let's save that and that's what we get okay so every even tr is going to have this background just so we have some difference 
Now let's set the um I'm going to remove the hover effect. Okay, so let me just copy this and on hover every T they shouldn't have a hover effect. So the background should be transparent. Okay, so on hover we don't we don't have any weird hover effects. Nice. Now what else do I want to do here? I think that's all for the tablet. Okay, let's actually view this on a real tablet, and this is what we have. Now, unlike the finished, I think this actually looks better than the finished project, right? Because the finished project I have the sidebars panning. The, the whole height of the screen but i think this actually looks better so we are going to keep this okay let's keep this and then let's move on to um so let me just remove this all right now let's actually make this responsive on um, mobile devices as well just like we have in a finished project on mobile devices we are going to have this um button here that is going to help us toggle the sidebar okay so let's go on to that so i'm going to scroll to the bottom here Now on mobile, as I showed you, we are going to have some buttons. Okay, two buttons that is going to help us toggle the the um, aside. Okay, so here, yeah, I'm going to have a button. Okay, and I'm going to gi give that a class of sidebar, and that's going to call toggle. Okay, I'm just going to duplicate this and the first one is going to have an id of show sidebar btn and the second one is going to have an id of hide sidebar btn okay and this first one is going to have they are both going to have icons okay so let's go back to full screen here i'm going to go to icon scouts and i'm going to search right icon okay in this right arrow that we have and i'm going to paste that in the yeah that's going to be in the first one okay and that is going to show the sidebar okay i'm going to paste it again and then just change this to left yeah so that is what we need and let's come to the media queries okay Let's come to the media queries and have the styles for for small devices or for phones okay so let me go back to the project reduce this and we have the two buttons okay so i'm just going to actually on large devices they shouldn't be visible okay so for the dashboard on light devices let's hide the um, sidebar toggle we are going to display them none okay but on small devices we want to show them but before we even show them let's have some styles for the actual dashboard okay so the dashboard itself is going to have a margin top of five frame all right now let's um target the dashboard container and the great template columns here is going to be one fr okay yeah that's weird but we are going to take care of that now the gap is going to be zero let me get the main okay so dashboard main and the margin is going to be zero i'm going to get the dashboard main h2 and the margin top is going to be one rep. All right, so that's what we have. Now let's target the aside. Okay, so dashboard aside. 
and the position is going to be fixed okay now the box shadow i'm going to give it a box shadow of two rem for the x axis zero for the y axis four rem for the blur and that's going to be an rgba of zero 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 point four all right so that is what we have right now um you know what for now it's going to be zero from the left and the height is going to be a hundred viewport height okay i'm going to give it a transition because we are going to have some sliding effect after we add the javascript to actually show or hide it okay in this case i'm going to give it a background color primary all right now i'm going to move on and show the toggles okay and they are going to be shown here so let me just bring this yeah so dashboard and we give that a class of sidebar toggle they are going to be displayed in line block let's give them a background of color primary variant and a color of white i'm going to position them fixed as well and give them a z index of one okay let's save and see what we have nothing is really showing they are here as you can see but let's give them a, a width of 2.5 frame same for the height and border radius of 50 percent zero zero and then 50 percent let's save and this is what we have okay let me bring this to the right okay and it's going to be four rem from the bottom okay and we have it here all right now I'm going to give it a phone size i'm going to increase the icon so a phone size of 1.3 should be good yep and i'm going to change the case to pointer all right let me give it a box shadow as well a box shadow of negative one rem on the x axis zero on the y axis i'm going to give it a blur of two rem and an rgba zero 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 and zero point four for the alpha all right so that's what we get all right now for the aside i'm going to target the h5s so dashboard side h5 and they are going to be displayed in line block good so that's what we have and remember we had two buttons okay so by default we should only have the show so we are going to target the hide sidebar btn and display that to none for now okay so we only have the show all right and that is all for the styles okay now let's go ahead and make this actually work using javascript okay so we are going to go back to the javascript file Now here we are going to grab the show button, the hide button, and then the aside or the side by itself. Okay, so let's do that. Let's first grab the um, sidebar. I'm just going to call it sidebar. Okay, document or query selector, and that's just the only aside we have on the page. So let's just do that. I'm going to duplicate this twice, and we are going to have the show side bar btn okay and we give that an id of show sidebar btn let me increase this come on and we have hide sidebar btn also
okay so those are the three things we need and what we are going to do is very similar to what we have here so um you are going to add an event list now on the on the show sidebar okay by but by default they should be hidden okay so i'm going to go back here and the um for the aside the left is going to be negative 100 percent okay so it's going to be hidden off off screen it's going to go off screen and we are going to add an event listener on the show sidebar btn okay so we are going to um, why do i have that and an event listener which is going to be a click event and on click we are going to show sidebar okay that is going to be a function we are going to have up top so i'm going i'm just going to create that show sidebar function it's going to be an arrow function okay so here i'm going to grab the sidebar and change the style left back to zero okay all right so let's try that i'm going to click and i have it okay all right so on click of this i want to remove it and then replace it with the hide button um instead just like we did for the nav okay so i'm going to grab the show nav or show sidebar btn and the style display is going to be none i'm going to hide it and the hide sidebar btn is going to have the opposite so that's going to be inline block okay so that's how we are going to do it okay so we click the button changes and then we have the sliding for the sidebar now we are going to let me leave a comment here okay we are going to um, hide it as well of course so i'm going to have an event listener on the hide sidebar btn that's going to hide sidebar there's going to be hide sidebar and here we want to change this back to negative 100 percent and this show is going to be in line block and the hide is going to go back to none okay so that's how we are going to toggle this all right so that's all for this one that's all for the javascript i'm just going to close it and i think we are done with the manage categories okay so this is how it's going to look on this is how it's going to look on tablets and this is how it's going to look on large screens okay so now let's move on to manage users okay which is going to be very similar to what we have on the manage category so i'm just going to copy everything here and paste it um on this page which is the manage users let's save and refresh and this is what we have so i'm just going to change some things around let me make this bigger so this title is going to say where is it okay manage users of course okay so we have that and from the finished projects let's see what we had manage users we have name username edit um delete and then admin okay so let's go ahead and then do that it is very very simple so we have name username edit delete and then um admin right okay so here we have name username 
um, um, admin. So admin is going to be yes or no. Okay, so we don't need this link. So I'm just going to remove these two. And then repeat this. Duplicate it twice. Or however many times you want to duplicate it. Oh, uh, yep. And this is actually going to take us to edit user. Okay. We're going to um, edit user. Edit user. Got HTML. Um, no, for this person. Jane Doe. Jane for the username. Let's save and see what we have. And this is it. Okay. So we have three users and everything is just like in the finished project. Name, username, edit, delete, admin. All right. So that is all for. Uh, so this should be the active. Okay. In this case. So I'm going to remove the active class from this and then put it on manage users. Put it on this. Okay, let's save and we have it. Okay, so the next is going to be manage posts. So let's go to that page. I'm just going to copy everything here. And that's the dashboard. Okay. And then paste it on this dashboard page. I'm going to remove the active class from this and then paste it on the dashboard. Let's save, refresh, and that's what we have. Okay, so from the finished projects, let's see. We have the title of the post, category, edit, and delete. Okay, so very, very simple. We have um, title of the post category of the posts edit and then delete no admin or nothing of course a post cannot be an admin all right so we have the title i'm just going to do lorem a okay so that's the title of the post it is going to be wild life we have edit and then delete okay so this is going to take us to edit posts.html and i'm just going to duplicate this three times or maybe more than that let's save let's see what we have and this is it okay so basically we are done with all the pages okay all the pages that uh doo -doo -doo. why is this misbehaving all right, let's correct that. So I'm going to go back to the CSS, go up to, let me make this smaller. Let me go up to the nav. And I want to target the avatar, okay? Nope, that's the nav profile. I want to target this. Let me make that, let's see. I'm going to make that 30, 130. Let me increase it. Uh, 140. Yeah, that's better. That's okay. All right. So we are done with all the pages, guys. We are done with all the pages. This is the home page. Everything is working perfectly. Okay. Everything is working as expected. Of course, there's no dynamic um, content that is being fetched from the database we are going to do that in the next video which is going to be the back end but we are done with uh what is this and it seems i have a bug here so let's just go i think it's because i had it's because from the 
it should be because of the form styles that i have here okay so if i should uncomment that out i don't have that problem okay so how do i solve this let's uncomment this out again mm. display flex flex direction column let me yeah so it's because of this flex direction that i have here all right so yeah that is causing the problem so to solve this i think the best way is to um mm, where is our search yeah there's our search bar we display the flex as well we're going to change the flex flex direction to be row let's save and we have it perfect now let's check out the other pages so we have services contacts which are the empty pages um let's go back to our dashboard we have add posts we have manage posts we have add user manage users we have add category and manage categories okay so those are for the um, different let's actually check the sign in and then the sign up pages as well so this is going to be the sign in page sign up and that's all guys i don't know what other page we should check but i think that is all for yeah so this is the category posts page okay this also so let's check from the um, files that we created we have the about page we check that add category add post add user blog um category posts um contact dashboard which is the uh, manage post page we have edit category let's check that out so let's go back to the dashboard we have edit post okay here we have edit user okay and then we have edit category as well all right so we have all those pages created let's let's continue why is this happening oh god let me close this yeah so we have edit 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 for the three pages we have index which is the home page come on all right we have manage categories and all that okay so we are done with all the pages which is amazing i did not think this would take um this time to finish i thought it, it would take longer but thanks guys and watch out for the back end which is going to um be up by next week okay a week from now all right thanks for watching and subscribe if you haven't already and i'm going to see you in the next one peace